<laughs> you did this. Reach the People Podcast, Season 3, Episode 3. I got Dylan Edwards in the building, and I got Jordan Dominic, Mr. Big Fofo in the building, bro. How y'all feel, bro? This is a good reunion. You know, man, it's good to be here, man. Good to be with my boy, JD. My yeah. boy Dylan was with me through the spring. He went through the torture, so, man. you know, man, it's great to be here, man. I love it. That's Brothers for Life. Y'all, y'all can't see it, but we're literally watching some of the season three or season two of Coach Prime. So basically, they're watching their last season, bro. Yeah. Even us turning this on, how crazy to really see. Like, I mean, you was just there, so it's not that crazy. But yeah. it is cool to see. Oh, I remember this day. Like, You know, it's crazy, bro. A lot of people look different now. Like, Oh, of course. Everybody look You look different. Grown. Yeah, I do look Man. different. I had short hair and everything. Back then, I think I had the uh, the braids at that point when we first started spring. I remember that. I don't even remember some of these people, bro. Look how short Shador hair is. <laughs> Man. So where were y'all both coming from at this time? I know, Dill, you was coming from high school, so you went to Derby? Yeah, Derby High School in Kansas. Kansas. Talk about Kansas, bro. You know we always joke about Kansas. We be Man. talking about the yellow brick road and stuff like that. But nah, let's put bro. some respect on Kansas. Do they really got how some good football in Kansas? I mean, it's not... Texas football or Florida football, but it's solid. Um, I got solid football. I feel like most of the people that get picked up out of Kansas usually linemen. Yeah. Usually the trenches. Um, okay. You know, corn fed, yeah. you know, country boys just trying to. I can't play talk. Football. My dad played at a uh, NAIA in Kansas when he was in college. What, what NAIA? Uh, I can't remember at the time, but he transferred to UF as a preferred walk on uh, after two years, I think. So he must have been cold. He was good. He was on the team with Emmett Smith. He was like, he, at first, he played D and and running back out in the NIA. He was playing both ways, and then he went to uh, Florida. Ended up, they said he was too small to play D and so he could play out the tight end and running back. He said he won't play running back. <laughs> I didn't even know your pops played running back. That's crazy. That's hard. So Kansas, I actually heard a, uh, a reporter. She interviewed Dill. Uh, it wasn't spring ball. It was like during the season. But she was like, yeah, Derby's like a, a powerhouse or something. Like she caught like people know about Derby. So then I told Dylan, I'm like, hey, bro, I got to start putting some respect on your yeah, name, bro. bro yeah, they Derby. saying that they saying your high school got a your high school turned basically. Nah, yeah. Like we really go to state like every other year, maybe every year. Yeah. The past six, seven years. How many years have you won state when you was in high school? I won twice, but went there three times. So two out of three, okay. Yeah, two out what, of three. You was a freshman once? Or what, um, what grade were you when, when you was The doing first it? one I won, I was a freshman. The second one I won, I was a sophomore. So, and then so your senior season, you didn't go? No. Nope. You were sad? I lost the game before state. I was what sad. about you, JD, when you was a senior? The last game. <laughs> I ain't never sniffed the playoffs in high school. Oh, wow. Buddy. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, we hey, bro, he's keeping it real, though. I respect that. I respect that. Nah, but I'm not going to lie. We had some good coaches there. We had Coach Tate. It was at George Jenkins Good High School job, down in Lakeland, Florida. We're going to make sure everybody know. We gonna we was on a re, we was the rebuild class. You hey, know? Shout, we was out, the rebuild shout out my bro class. Corey Sanders real quick. Lakeland. Man, you know. Shout out, the L. L. shout out the L. Shout out Marquand. 350 Heem. Y'all go drop. Man, yeah. that boy shout rock. Shout out Lakeland, bro. For real. I rock with A lot of people come from Lakeland. People don't know that. Athletes come from Lakeland. All my bros that I know came from Lakeland were just it's insane. Yeah. It's like, bro, this dude shouldn't be able to do this type of stuff with ease like this, bro. Like, it's insane. We got so many athletes. I feel like just Florida in general just breeds athletes. But, like, Polk County themselves, we had so many different athletes. Like you said, Corey Sanders. We had Dwayne Bacon. We got Kev, not Kevin Knox. I was going to say Kevin Knox. We got uh, Derwin James yeah. Jr., you feel me? Yeah. Like, that boy was straight out of Hayes City. Like, that boy was cold. I was watching him. Like when they played, they actually played my high school when I was a freshman. Derwin James, I remember he picked the ball off and ran down and ran over one of our running backs, like running back, like running the ball back, like for a pick six. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. wow. <laughs> that man Derwin James was cold. We had a bunch of people. Tracy McGrady came out. We had okay. Ray Lewis, the Pouncy Twins. Oh, Polk County. Yeah. I didn't know Tracy Kathleen was from there. Tracy, Tracy McGrady went to Auburndale. Oh okay okay okay. <clears throat> so Florida. Bro, anytime I talk to anybody from Florida, bro, it's basically like they gonna tell you they got the best rappers, they got the best food, they got the of best course. football, bro. You cannot convince them otherwise, bro. It don't matter where you come from. Yeah. You could come from the NFL, uh, NFL planet. <laughs> like, no, bro, y'all don't know I Florida name, like that. Name bro. one other state that got better football than Florida. I think Texas does. No, Texas. <laughs> no, no. But, Texas. And no. look, I'm, I'm gonna no. let your car, your car take no. this because. He not even no. gonna be on the camera, but he went to DeSoto. What did y'all do in high school? Just real quick, just real quick. 
So we made it to probably third round. We got beat by uh, South Lake though. Oh. South Lake. Yo, high school general. Desoto. What about him? What do y'all do? Oh, football. It's football all day in Desoto. It's football and basketball. The U. Yeah, they won state back to back. That's Jay Miller though. Oh, yeah, Jay Miller won. Yeah. Okay, so that was your time. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah, start losing. They start losing. <laughs> It's Man. like my bro, like why y'all wait till I leave to start winning? <laughs> no, nah, that's the same way it was with us in high school. So with us, my first season, my varsity team went one and nine. Then we went two and eight. We went one and eight, and then we turned it around and went six and four. And we really should have went eight and two and went to playoffs that year. But I don't know. We just couldn't put the we couldn't put the ball in the end zone when we needed it to and all that, which the time it goes sometimes. See, but, that's how I know how Florida and. Texas ball is different because in Kansas, everybody makes the playoffs. Wow. Like, it don't matter if you won an 11, you still get the chance to play. How? In the how playoffs. Does, how does but you'll, you'll that, play, how does you'll sense? be a lower seed, but you have to play a higher seed. But, but no. Yeah. How many, so how many teams did y'all have in, like, y'all's league? Like, uh, did y'all have 1A, 2A, 3A? So we had, like, eight, like, regular season games. Mm-hmm. And then we all, like, the state. Like, if you go to the state game, bad, yo. I'll be right you back. have 13 games. 13? Yeah. So, did y'all have, like, classifications, like 1A, 2A, 3A football? Yeah. So, what, what was the high? What, what did was, you play in? I was in 6A, so that's the highest a? class in Kansas. So, so like, 6A is the highest class After you Kansas? get done with, like, all the Wichita schools and yeah. the schools close by, you play Kansas City schools and, you know, you have to play a Kansas City school probably in the state championship or in the semifinals. Yeah. So it was it was great comp. Definitely Kansas City's great comp. Um, but like every team had a chance to make the playoffs. <laughs> every team. Every I'm, team. I'm so stuck on that's that. Crazy, ain't it? I'm, that's crazy. crazy. Like every team. So for us during my high school season and everything, like only the top two teams from each district would be able to make the playoffs. And then they switched it up to like it was a point system where the number one team from that district made it, and then like you get a certain amount of points for however good that team is or whatever a that team is. So whatever team is playing like a better team, like say Osceola, which is like a powerhouse team, mm-hmm. is playing like a 3A school. Osceola's 8A versus a 3A school. They would only get like two points or three points if they won versus if they played another 8A school. We have different classifications like y'all do. So we have 1A, 2A, 3A, all the way up to 8A and everything. And then there's a different classification for, you know, national schools and everything like IMG and, you know, what you call it and everything like that. But, like, so throughout the classifications, each classification has their own uh, state, like, state championship. So it's, like, 1A championship, 2A championship, 3A championship. And the state of Florida, we have different districts and everything. And so we basically have a playoff, four teams in the district or whatever, and, like, you play off and everything. And, like, you can get up to, like, like you said, 13, 14 games or whatnot. But... You would go play all over Florida, and then the state semifinals, Straight. I believe, and the championships are played in. I can't remember because I never went. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really don't know. I can't remember where uh, it was played at, but all the teams would come and they played there. And then basketball was the same way, but they would play in the. Uh, it's a center in Lakeland, where I'm from. I'll put any high school Florida team versus any other school. You feel me? Like, it don't matter. All right, bro. That's just how I feel. Bro, like I said, bro, they're not going to let you live that down. Florida, you know what I'm saying? I like it, though. Y'all going to rep it. Yeah. If it's somebody from Florida, bro, you going to know. Because they're going oh, sure. to be on some Florida activities. I promise you. Where that's listening to some you. sped up music, bro. Just, turn <laughs> just the way they talk. Just the way they talk, yeah. their animations. Man. You feel <laughs> their animations, their slang. Uh, so high school, coming out of high school, uh, deal. I remember uh, back in the day, you showed me like some unlisted there was like archive photos on Instagram and it was all the places you went to take visits to. Yeah. Talk about your recruitment process coming out of high school. I guess if you want to talk about your accolades, your rankings or whatever, like I want them to know what was what was what type of player was Dylan Edwards up until the point before he came to see you. Yeah, I mean, my recruiting process was definitely crazy in itself because um I didn't start off with four stars. You know, I had to work my way up. I was a three star for a cool year and a half, maybe two years. Mm -hmm. Um, just going to camps, trying to get my name out there. And, of course, being from Kansas, it's, like, so hard to get recruited. So I would go to places like Texas and Florida. So not to stop you, but you did play for Coach Prime before you even went to high school. Before I even moved to Kansas. How did that come about? So um, I was born in Cali, Inglewood, California, and then we moved to Texas where uh, 
I was there all the way until I was seven. Okay. And then from when I was seven, we moved to Kansas, and that's where I've been ever since. But Coach Prime was my first football coach. Coach Mathis was my first football coach, and Coach Hart was my first football coach. And <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy, just like, like how you coming back, like, dang, bro, so I can't escape like, these boys. Man, it it's like, matter. watch, they're gonna go to the NFL next, and they're gonna be right there. All right, bro, you, you need know to what, stop, Dylan? Bro. We won't chew, Dylan. Yeah. Come in. It's like, come on, bro. I, hey, bro. <laughs> but I'm it's like, all day. it's so crazy to you know know that you know they they're your coaches now. Yeah. Um, Man, I was little though, so I don't remember too much. But uh, when I moved to Kansas, you know, I I really came from the bottom. Like I didn't come from like a a bad upbringing, but you know, as far as recruiting, man, like that's the lowest of the low. You ain't got nobody out there looking at you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just grinding every day. Um, so really, what got me on the you know recruiting platform was seven on seven. Uh, I would mm. play for any team I could find. Like literally, I look up <laughs> okay. on YouTube under the radar, like, who I could go to, like, what camps was the best, and yeah. I would go to them. i beg my parents, or they will say they money, and they would drive. We never flew. They would always drive. That's hard. And we'll drive sometimes 13, 14 hours just to, you know what I'm saying, just to get my name out there, and sometimes I wouldn't even get the offer, but they were just happy that, you know, I just got to, you know, really put on for, you know, our family and just me in general. And, uh, yeah, you know, my senior year is when he – when I really blew up, uh, you know, I committed to Notre Dame and it's like, you know, the whole world was like in my hands, you know, I was going to a great, great academic school and, and playing the sport I love. But um, once I got that call from, you know, Coach Mathis and Coach Prom, you know, it was like God, you know, wanted me to be in this position because, you know, who not going to think that, especially when that, those were your first coaches. Yeah. So um, just having they, them call me. Um, like two weeks before signing day, and then I take the visit the same week they called me, mm -hmm. and then just committed and just took a chance on myself, knowing that they was, you know, one in eleven, and I didn't care. I I knew it was gonna be bigger than just you know football. It was gonna change you know sports forever. It's not just about football. So it's definitely good to be part of you know something like this. The conviction you have about that decision was that like the same from everybody you was around or did you have anybody that was kind of no. kind of questioning it for you i'm not you know man, what i'm saying i, I mean, mean you knew what you was gonna do 100 percent, man like i had the most hate coming to colorado like everyone wanted me to you know stay home and um even going to notre dame people just wanted me to stay home so just oh, leaving yeah. to go to colorado and then that being a big thing to wearing coach prime you know move from jackson state they just thought I was, you know, clout chasing or whatever. But I just wanted to do something that was bigger than me, you know, yeah. bigger than, you know, anything I could dream of. And I knew there was going to be something nice here. Yeah. What about you, J.D.? How was your experience coming here? And where was you coming from? So coming to Colorado, I was coming from Arkansas. And it was good. I played well at Arkansas. I feel like I, you know, learned a lot about myself and learned a lot about just football in general and whatnot. And coming out of Arkansas, I felt like I did – you know, do a little doopsy do on the fans a little bit because I thought I was, I really believed I was going to go and want to stay there. Like, I thought I was going to stay throughout December and stay throughout uh, just the next season and everything for another year. So I ended up putting out a tweet that said, I'll be back with like the Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, just saying mm -hmm. it and everything. Oh, the I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but then, like, over like a month and two months and everything, like things had changed and there was personnel changes within like Arkansas and like things were just different. And, you know, I just ended up wanting to leave and ended up wanting to go to a, you know, different school and everything, enter back into the transfer portal. And a lot of people thought it was tampering, which honestly, it does look a lot like in this day and age, NIL and whatnot, but oh, there was no tampering. I was literally just like, you know what, like. I feel like it was best for me. I prayed a lot. I talked to my parents a lot. Like it was a lot of like behind the scenes, just like talking and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to do, like moving forward and just everything like that. And so I ended up getting into the portal and Coach Prime reached out to me and it wasn't a clout chasing thing. It wasn't a, oh, I have to go do this and I have to go do that just to be around these people. You know, it was just a simple Coach Kelly actually hopped on the phone first and was like, hey, talk to me. Started you know, showing me the scheme, showing me the defensive scheme and everything and told me exactly what I needed to do, pointed out my flaws and showed me how I could become a better football player. 
Shout out Coach Kelly, bro. Yeah. Man, so once Coach yeah, Kelly was talking to me like that, like he was one of the few coaches in the portal that was like being real critical and like telling me, oh, I'm not here to blow, you know, smoke up your behind and everything like that, but I'm really here to just tell you exactly how it is, what you need to work on, what you need to improve to be a better player at the next level. Nah, so that's like, dope. Coach Kelly, a real one for sure. No, nah, he really is, man. And just like being able to talk to him and then Coach Nick, you know, Coach Nick, yeah. man. Shout out Coach Nick too, bro. It's, it's all love. Man, love. It's all love to all Coach love. Nick Williams, man. Love. It's all love, man. How, love that man at Syracuse. That man going to go crazy. I'm already knowing. How was your uh, experience with prom? My experience with prom. Up here, like the season, like how, how just was it? Workouts and all. So, I mean, just coming through, it was a different experience. Like I was at two different schools before this. So uh, just going through what the workouts those, and everything. Those so the people can know. Uh, I was at Georgia Tech from 2018 to 2021, and then I went to Arkansas for 2022. Okay, cool. All right. Before I went to, you know, Colorado for 2023, if anybody, you know, even remembers my name. Okay, J.D. I don't remember your name, bro. I don't think so. Well, they going to remember your name at all? You feel me? so, one day. It's just like, sometimes you got, you. hey, this is the opportunity I had, but that's not the last one I'm going to get. Yeah. You feel me? So, you're going to be straight. Nah, but for sure, y'all definitely do a good job of like putting people out there and just showing the world. JD was back. So. Well, that's the funny part. We jumping all around, but it's relevant inf- information for y'all because it's like I thought JD was gone, bro. I thought you was mm-hmm. training somewhere else. I didn't. Nah, I hadn't even seen you, gang. <laughs> but whole time you here, so it's like okay. First day he pulled up on the scene, already a video out. JD already is controlling his own narrative again. First yeah. five minutes in the facility. Yeah, just you know back what I'm saying, in. like. You make letting it be known, like that's what I do like about how you embrace that and even embracing coming on here. So I appreciate yeah. all of y'all first off. But I feel like you see the you see the value in that. You never shied away from it. I'm gonna let, make sure my play matches up to my talk so I can talk too. Man, I gotta be able to talk. Really? Like, I feel like if you are not able to back up the talk, then like what's the point of talking? Like I'm not no hype man, I'm not no whatever. And like I appreciate the way you're able to just like bring the narrative in real time and really show like the nitty and gritty of just everything like people don't understand how in-depth of an analysis like y'all really have into like our lives and everything yeah it's 100%. the realest of the real that's why it's hard for people to understand yeah and that i don't know i hope that doesn't go over other people's heads y'all really just create so many narratives when i'm actually showing you like who people really are yeah and that's why it's funny when y'all say stuff that's just not true at all so coming to colorado i'm gonna i'm gonna pick it back off your car's question how was it being, he said, his question was, how's it being around Prime when you first met him, when you first got here? I remember yeah. Dylan, I was here, not when he first met him, but when he came for his visit, I took a picture. I took his yeah. picture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just a funny thing to remember. That, and that's when I first started, we had just got here. But was there any narratives that came from you playing for Prime? So like to piggyback off what he said, how was it playing for him? How was your interactions with him? But obviously, there's more pressure on you now. Was there anything that you heard playing for a coach that were like critiques of you now? Because now, since you play for Colorado, now they want to. When you was in high school, oh, he's he's so dynamic. He's this. He's that. He's that. Now it's Colorado. Now they like, oh, they play TCU. Nah, there's no way they can win. Like that was the narrative of the school. Yeah. So now they're trying to tear down individual players and say, oh, JD, he's just he came from two other school. He. Like, dang. Yeah. So were there any narratives that you, that didn't come from you, but you heard from the outside world as a result of coming to Colorado? Really, when I first got here, pretty much all the coaches were just saying, you know, it's going to be a lot of outside noise, but everything in this room is what you got to care about if you want to have a successful season. Mm -hmm. That's how I just, you know, take every day life with Colorado football, you know, just off you know, listening to Coach Prom, listening to my position coach, Coach Flea, just about not caring about the outside noise and just what's going on in the outside. Just care about what you're doing every day and coming in and trying to make yourself better. Um, yeah. I think everybody that, you know, goes to college um, wants to play in the league, but nobody wants to put in the work to get there. So um, the most I can do for right, right now, as far as me, is, you know, continue being the best me I can be and coming to practice every day with a, a mindset to where I want to go, and that's to the league. So, yeah. um, you know, I try to make that as as best as I can to and show Coach Prom and show these coaches that, you know, it's not just football with me. I want to lead not just on the field, off the field, anything I do because um, that's what he expects of, you know, me and the other people on the squad. So, yeah. yeah. 
with all that leading, my boy. How do you take care of your mental health and everything off the yeah, field? Yeah, bro, because like, you, you in a good place, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, but I know I know there's a whole lot going in through like your mind, uh, especially yeah. coming in as a freshman, really playing really well this past freshman year. I and see. then, you know, just having to step up this next year and like taking on a leadership role so young, like how does it feel? I say like when I first got to college, it was in the spring, well, in the winter really. Mm -hmm. so, like January, I yeah. came up. And it was kind of, you know, sad leaving home, especially seeing like, you know, people posting, you know, they still at high school, you know, just having the experience. <laughs> you, so you, know you left what early? I'm yeah, I left you early. You had to miss, you told me you had to miss something. You missed prom or I, what'd you miss? Prom was on our spring game. Bro, play. Whoa, I kept yeah. telling, I kept telling Dill, bro, fly back home after the bro, spring I game. Was, yeah, you bro, lit. I thought about it. Nah, that he, thought, that he thought, he thought it was, you thought it was at night though, didn't you? Yeah, you thought I did. the spring game. See, Whole I time. thought the same thing, but. I do regret not going to my senior prom like after the spring game because I know that would have been hard. I had a good spring game. Yeah, so you lit. Going yeah, back, this I was on ESPN. Yeah. You would have just popped yeah. up and nobody would have known. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, once I got here, though, I, I was a little bit sad um, just knowing I left my family, you know, back in Kansas and everything. But I knew I was, I was, I was on a good path. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? I came to college and, and you know, and, and it's balling. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. That's all I can do, bro. Like, I I got deeper in my faith coming to college for sure. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, without faith, you know, everything is dead. So, yeah. um, in my opinion. So, yeah. like, for sure. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, so my mental health is great. Um, especially, you know, just having a time for yourself. You know, mm -hmm. just sitting down by yourself, having that quiet time, thinking about, you know, things you need to do throughout your week and stuff like that is something that, you know, definitely helps me for sure. Yeah. You moved out the dorm. That's another big thing. I mean, yeah. first freshman year was in the dorm. First time ever even living outside of your own home where it's like, I'm comfortable. How was that experience just having to, you got, now you got to share space with somebody. Uh, like you, yeah. you think of college football, like it's just a lot of, you got to go to class still. It's just a lot of different things. Like your life looks different now. A lot of different things. And people don't understand until you get here that your time is really valuable. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to learn is because... Um, in high school, man, I, I was trying to be in everybody's face, you know, trying to have a good time, just just trying to, you know, um, just be around everybody, you know. Yeah. And once you get to college, you see, you know, you have a lot of downtime and you have a lot of long time. So you figure out yourself and who you really are, you know. And so that's what I feel like, you know, um, this year was definitely big for me is I knew who I am and like I know who I am on the field now. So um, playing just gives me more confidence for sure. Yeah. What about you, Jetty? How did you deal with your mental because you was definitely known as somebody that had high energy, as a, even a cameraman. Yeah. I'm knowing if I go to JD, he's gonna give me something. Y'all yeah. missed the speech that he gave his last speech. Uh, you snapped. Yeah, you turned up. Yeah, you I tried, snapped. I tried, bro. I tried to, you know, it was a heartfelt I, bro, moment. I man. think I it have that, bro. You snapped, bro. It was a heartfelt moment. Not man. a stutter, like, no nothing. And me tearing up and everything. Bro, it was, it was, bro, I don't okay. think you understand, like, being in college for so long and then just like realizing it's really your last game. Like this is your last college game. This is the last time you're going to play with the same uniformed people right next to you on the side. Like, and like everything just flow, man. Like, yeah. and these are just feelings. Like as you come into it, you realize these are the feelings that just like build up into you. Like, especially when you love football and like you just put your all into it throughout your life. Like those are the feelings that just like, I don't know. It just popped up, and like I appreciate y'all boys. I didn't know what I was saying up there. I no, know you I snapped out, but bro, I can play back the clip, bro. You did not stutter at all, bro. Mm -hmm. You picking people out, saying I know what you gonna do, yeah. like that, bro. You like that was insane, bro. That's hurt. Like I would have thought you written that. Yeah, like, I'm I trying to tell you. I could have played right after hearing your, that. your speech, man. Yeah. Like I was ready to go play that appreciate night. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, shoot, I don't had a lot of people in my life that like. I'm very motivational, you feel me? And just, like, everybody that I've known that's been able to give speeches from my mama, being able to, you know, just, she's a CEO, my dad's a lawyer, so they've always, you yeah. know, tried to drill that into you, that you got to be able to speak and everything, and then always speak from the heart and just be honest. Because if you're just being honest and you're not trying to think about nothing, I feel like that's really what's going to make it flow. Yeah. But then, like, when it comes to just the football aspect of it and just, like, during that, like, when I tell you that, like, you got to save it a moment, bro. I can't stress that enough. You have to save it a moment. Even though I was in college for six years, like that time flew by. Like I still remember my first day on college campus when my parents dropped me off and like left me in Atlanta. You feel me? At the Georgia Tech. Like 
at the dorms, bro. And it's crazy to me. Like, that jump flew so fast. And, like, you don't think it flies that fast until it's gone. Oh, and, like, I played through COVID, too, you feel me? So, yeah. like, that was a strain unto itself, just, like, trying to figure out if we ever going to have football this year, if we not, trying to figure out what the schedule's going to be, who wants to play us, how we going to deal with the seating arrangement, how we going to deal with practices. Yeah, yeah. Like, games, it's, travel, it's insane. Everything. Yes, like. So when I tell you, like, bro, take advantage of it, love it. And I'm like, that's why I told you so many times, like, I'm jealous of you. I'm just really jealous of y'all because, like, y'all document everything and y'all get everything. So, like, no matter how old you get, 80, 90 years down the line. Oh, you saying since he's a freshman, he came yeah, into that. He came oh, so now, yeah, bro, you, he came you have in that ingrained, like... like I don't care if it's good, bad, or ugly. I want to. I want to have it because yeah. I do. I'm gonna have. I'm forever. I want gonna have all of my stuff. Bro. I want all of my videos yes. because why would I not want that? Like that's so real like, memory. That's, that's your memory. Like this is really like your time to shine. This is the best years of our lives for real. Nah, like, for that's sure. really real. Really because like sometimes, you know, even when I'm bored, bro, I just you know put on an old video yeah. when I first got here, and it's like. I came a long <laughs> way. You really came a long <laughs> way. Like, and like, as you go, use that Proud to build you, yourself up and build up that self-esteem. Like, at first, you remember, you looking back from your freshman days. I'm looking at videos of myself when I, I ain't going to lie. I remember a video of me when I had blue hair. I literally dyed my oh hair. Oh, my blue, God, bro. Like a super saiyan. It was hey, right Shout, out, shout uh, out my bro Vito. That's some stuff Vito would do. Man. All red. It was, All red. <laughs> it was right. I remember it was right after, um, what you call it, Goku. Goku, yeah, you know I'm a big anime fan, huge anime fan. Do but you have anime on your car, bro? Yes, I do. Jujutsu Kaisen on the windows. I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I don't know anime, <laughs> and I know y'all going to get on me if I say something about anime. <laughs> they be like, no, that's the most best series on earth, bro. You don't know what you're talking about. No, nah, no, nah, I'm hey. telling you, I'm anime guru when it comes to it. Hey, Dill, <clears throat> how did you feel when you caught that swing route, took Ooh. it to the crib at TCU? See, I'm in... I'm in my dorms watching I'm the game. Right I'm, like, I'm like, who is Ooh. this? Knowing I'm finna play with him next year. Where the, like, where how did you feel on that, oh, that game? No. All right. I'll let you talk. It's about. crazy. Man. I to can't the crib. lie. That was definitely the most nerve-wracking game coming into it just because you don't know what to expect. It's a whole new team. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my first college game. All the anticipation. Um, it was just crazy. Um and just to know the, the fact that I had a good game, my first game, it was great. But I knew after that first game happened, it was a whole lot more expectation yeah. that was going to come with it. So it was definitely a good feeling. But at the same time, it was bittersweet knowing, okay, is these people going to think I, I need four touchdowns a game? Mm -hmm. or do I, <laughs> what do did I, you think? Do I need a touchdown or two a game? Like, um, I wasn't thinking like that before every game. But it was just sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm – I'm a freshman. I'm coming in just trying to do my part. And yeah. whatever the coach's opportunity gives me, I mean, I'm going to take full advantage of it. So um, the rest of the season was just pretty much, you know, it was hard. But at the same time, you know, you got to do what the team wants, you know. So did you, like, set goals for yourself, like, throughout the season of what I want to do, what I want to accomplish, what I feel like will be a successful season for me? To be honest, my – I set the bar high yeah. um, in the off season. I remember talking to Darius, telling him, you know, yeah. bro, I ain't gonna lie, I want ten touchdowns my freshman year. Yeah, we talked yeah. about that. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. my goal, ten touchdowns, and uh, I felt like I could have got it last year, but you know, um, you know, the cards was dealt, you know, yeah. the other way. So the cards wasn't dealt. Um, in your but favor. this year, um, I definitely want to, you know, up my stats. But bro, to be honest, I don't care about anything else but winning. Yeah. You know, as long as we win. I think everything else will fall in line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's did, the biggest thing for me. Did that affect you in any way? I hear you talking about it now, unaffected. You know, cards was dealt the other way. But when you were going through it, first game, you got to understand. Bro, you just came out of high school. Your first college game. Yeah. Like, I mean, so, how, many how, how many touchdowns? How many touchdowns? I, I have four. You like, have four touchdowns your first yeah. college game. As versus a true freshman. Versus, true freshman versus the... The runner up, or did they have they just won? Did CC the, won? No, they were the runner up. The runner up for the national championship last year. A mm -hmm. team that they look at JD swagging out right here. Yeah. Man. Hey, this is before the TCU nah, game. We watching the right turn right this now. Is lit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Woo. Yeah, we was you icy, know, D bro. You know, D Lion, we was hey. always up there. Hey. Hey. 
But I was so not nervous. It was just like, bro, we here. Like that's he we said, in Texas. We here. Bro. Like, we here. We back home. Man, we here. Your car. Bro. You was watching this. You said at your yeah, dorm. Yeah, I was in my dorm watching this. I'm like, man. What you I think? Wanna, I want to play for this team, knowing I'm getting the portal. I was finna go here. So you was already knowing. Yeah, as soon as I hit the portal, Misfits hit me up. I'm like, I'm just entertaining. I'm waiting on, <laughs> waiting on prom, waiting on right now. That's how stuff goes behind the scenes. You wouldn't even know it. Oh, it was hot, but it wasn't as hot as they thought. Nah. They thought we was not going to be able to function. Man. They thought we was going to get they thought, they I think it's a deleted from scene mountains. from here. They played it in our hype videos. Remember, it's yeah. in the middle of the field after the game. Jimmy is Jimmy Zay. And Shador, they like we. They thought we couldn't do it. We shocked the world. Yeah, I don't yeah, think it's yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. They, was like, we they thought we couldn't do it. It was Zay talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was crying. No, nah, like bro. everybody was crying. I bro, was crying. we were so turned. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. The one mm. thing I remember about this game was what was they call it? They were saying Shador or Travis was overrated, and then they started using racial slurs. I remember that. You know, I was remember crazy. when we was walking <laughs> hey, by. Hey, bro, you, you the one that recorded it. You did. Oh, remember you that? the one that recorded bro, it. Because you got kind of mad, like, man, this is what they doing at TCU. Oh, yeah, I'm maybe, telling maybe. You. I'm just like, bro, this is good. You might not remember. Those, it, those are the bro. fans, not the it, players, but those are the fans. Where, like, where was, was he at? By. Where was he at? We saw the bus. So, like, you remember when we was walking out from, like, that side of the, like, the uh, sideline? So, yeah. the far sideline was yeah. our sideline. Down on this left side of the end zone. So, down, like, where Dylan just scored at on the other side, right okay, there. Okay, yeah. When y'all was warming up. Yeah. And they was calling Travis or Shador overrated or whatever. No, they was calling Travis overrated because y'all came back with that other video when Trav got that pick off where he was, like, coming off. And he got up and was, like, over there high-stepping yeah. and everything. I remember that. And I like, but I ain't gonna lie. That's the one thing I remember about that game. Just like burned into my memory was like that play is insane. That play was oh, insane. Bluff. Trevor, I, Trevor I, just Trevor went crazy too. Trevor just got that pick, boy. Trevor went crazy Bing. too. <laughs> Even watching this, this is in, this is in history, bro. Darius, let me ask you something. Yeah. Not just the first game, but every game in general. Do y'all feel like a pregame rush? Pre-game like rush, I know yeah. y'all yeah. filming and everything. No, yeah, but bro. I feel like, like y'all in the game. Because I feel like I'm in the game because I'm not gonna lie. At Jackson, it was a high scoring, high volume scoring team. Yeah. So I'm used to running up. They didn't care if we was on the sideline. Yeah. We yeah. actually could be in the in- end zone With recording. The, oh yeah, at, in the swag. So, bro, I'm running. So yeah, it's a rush because it's like, bro, we finna turn up. You you turned up. Yeah. If you watch Bucky's videos from Jackson. He's behind the camera talking crazy, bro. Yeah. Because that's just raw emotion because that's his dad's team. That's his brother's team. Yes. Yeah. So somebody got like mad. Somebody really... got mad at me for saying we in a video with Jalen Ellis. Am I not supposed to say we? I have this on for a reason. I mean, I believe in the team. I I'm you supposed to feel like you are part of the team. Like, bro, everything everybody does matters. People don't like, understand. Put, like, like, like I'm not a player on the team, but yeah. bro, I that that kind of confused me when y'all said we're confused why he's saying we when he's talking about the, bro it's all of us like what are you talking about yeah people so don't do understand. i feel like i'm in the game yeah people don't understand that like even the people behind the scenes are still part of the team like they don't understand yeah, they coming bro. into the building every day they putting in the hours every day they the same ones that are literally just there on the field with us every day like you the one that's giving us a nitty-gritty you yeah Dion Jr., you feel me? Like, Bucky, my bad. Bucky yeah, and everything. Man, I'll be, you feel me? But, nah, just everything. Like, y'all be in there nitty-gritty, too. Like, people don't understand, like, the actual work that's Morning really meetings. put in behind We still got to be on time, too. It's like, so so is is nobody on the team that doesn't play on the team? Like, you know there's a whole staff, right, and yeah. support staff. Mm-hmm. Like, so in the NFL, like, are, are the play people that work for the team, they're not on the team? Yeah. I don't get it. You're like, I put... I mean, I don't know. I take I take being a part of the organization, being a part of the team seriously. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do my role too. Like, and so I feel like that kind of bro, that actually made me that offended me because I'm just like that's the yeah. thing what? though. It's the role. Like, bro, right. I'm trying to. say. You don't like, say athletic trainers ain't a part of the team. Yeah, that's disrespectful, bro. Like, that's real disrespectful. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? It doesn't matter if this trainer never. That's what they're they're here doing their job, bro. Mm-hmm. They're putting in time toward the betterment of others. Oh my gosh. Around them that's, and that's the exact play. That's this the, the exact this is the play. Pick where, this is a uh, play where Trav picked it off after Bro was saying he's overrated. Yeah, he's overrated. Is that people don't know playing with a person like him? And I'm not just saying this, bro. Like this is a hundred. Like playing with a person like Travis makes you better. Like 
Arden said during his game on the sideline, he was like, I'm so glad we have Travis on his team. And I was glad to hear that because up until that point, a lot of people had been questioning, is he actually is he like, like that? that? Is yeah. he actually going to be good? A lot, up to the, like a lot up to this point, they were questioning a lot of things about us. They were questioning Shador. They were I'm talking about people on the team, bro. Even on the team, bro. Like people didn't understand. Like no, but even on the team too, they were questioning Shador. Yeah, they were yeah, questioning right. Travis. They were you're questioning right, Shiloh. 100%. They were question. They were literally questioning anybody Every, that anybody, anybody, anybody that came in. Yeah, this was <clears throat> during the like losing when they all started losing. No, this, no, this before was before we even before played the, season. the game. Or this, like, this was as soon them, as Coach Prom came in. Like question yeah. them is like, are they good? Yeah, he is. Yeah, bro. We had multiple fights. It's not physical fights that the first team and I'm going to speak on all this, bro. I'm so glad I'm actually feel comfortable enough to say this. Like I'm in the own crib, like, bro, the first team, they swore they that they would have beat us before. And coming from, I don't know, coming from the swag, coming from Jackson, the question of, oh, uh, are you a part of the team? Like, I felt the same way there. Like, I definitely feel like we would have beat them. And and it's not even coming from like an arrogant thing. It's coming from are you a winner? Yes or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it doesn't matter the level. My in my mind, I'm a winner because I've been winning. I don't care about the level because losing on this level is not any better or worse than losing on a, on a lower level or higher level. Losing still losing. So when you're talking about y'all would have beat us, but it's like, bro, we know what we do. So that mentality should show you. Or that dynamic should show you there's already people that believe that you may be superior or uh, like inferior to them mm. based on where you came from. So the HBCU narrative was not only on the outside, it was present within the team. Yeah. Like, oh, Savion just an HBCU back. Or Shador just this. Or Shador not. Or Shiloh not. Okay, cool. Yeah. That is true, bro. It's just crazy looking at this. Like, we watch I'm not gonna lie. I'm, so, I'm so mad I didn't get that sack. I love that we won the game. I'm happy about everything. <laughs> I just wish I got that sack for his fumble. That kid. was you uh, yeah. coming off that blitz? Mm -hmm. Bro, that mm -hmm. was the happiest I think I ever felt in my life. Bro, I got that video. Yeah. I got to find all these videos. Bro, this is legendary, bro. That was this video right here. They doubted us. That's hard. Yes. That's the hardest video. It said, bring tears to my eyes. I took so many I remember hours. this was the intro to the music we finally got one, I'm start. telling you. Yeah. But, I know Coach Prime was... The funny part about the play for Prime stuff, y'all think... Uh, this is another thing I want to address. Like, a lot of stuff that we do, people think is so corny, bro. But I'm trying to tell you how much that stuff actually matters. Mm -hmm. First off, I believe... Bro, it actually does matter if people, first off, believe in themselves... That I don't even care if I'm playing bad. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. That's just my standard, first off. Then also, collectively, we're going to win. That's my expectation. That's what we're going to do because that's what I came here to do. I didn't come here to lose. Yeah. Cool. Having that type of mentality, bro, I feel like it, we, we, we simplify it. We saying that I believe and different stuff like that. But when you don't have people to actually think like that, Things don't go how you it's really want. What it's hard, like, it's hard, it's what hard to win. What I feel like that is a lot of people confuse Coach Prime's self-confidence and a lot of people that he brought in self-confidence for arrogance. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people believe, oh, a lot, like people be overstepping or people be thinking so much of themselves. But no, if they think this much of themselves and they put themselves into that role and they start making the plays and they start doing what they do and they start you know, building a portfolio, building a resume for themselves is going to be insane. Like, that's how you got to, you know, you got to yeah. act. Like, nobody just is going to go about their day, oh, I did this, I did that, whatever, whatever, and just keep it pushing. Like, everybody wants to, you know, be their own person. Everybody wants to be their own individual person, and everybody wants to show out and strut and everything. And it's not even about, like, showing out and just, like, you know, being cocky and whatnot. It's just simply having that self-confidence of, I feel like I'm, better than this person or I feel yeah. like I'm gonna be better than this or better than that and even if you don't think you're better than that person you could never admit it to their face because that's just admitting defeat for real I feel like or if you do tell them it's really just a place out of humility and just wanting to learn from them you know trying to understand how I can become better to become better than this person or trying to learn from them or even understanding their talents and what makes them so good you feel me yeah and that's what a lot of people don't understand like they believe that Coach Prom isn't willing to grow and isn't willing to learn. And they believe the people around here aren't willing to grow and aren't willing to learn. But people are always listening. People are always watching. People are always learning. People are always expanding themselves. And that's how they grow every single day, day in and day out. So with that being said, if you believe that, this is the other question that I was going to ask. 
Do you believe uh, that the play for prime thing or whole sentiment is is a is a factor in winning? I say that because I was saying Coach Prime was so turnt after we won. Yeah. For me personally, it's like if somebody first off believed in me and told me I could do something, then I actually did it. Yeah, I would want to do it because they told me I didn't come saying, you know what? I'm in college. First game, I'm going to just go play this. You do. That's just the cards I was dealt. And he's telling me, even if I already believe I can win, he's telling me what I'm going to do. I'm going to want to prove him right. He believes yeah. in me. So that play for prime thing, I feel like that's a positive thing. But y'all think it's corny when nah. people are saying stuff like that. It's like, if your coach is telling you you're going to be great, you're going to want to prove him right. Yeah. You know what's crazy is I got asked this question the other day, like, does playing for Coach Prime, like, does that make you feel a different way? And 100% because playing for Prime, bro, he's the greatest player of all time yeah. that's put on pads. You know what I'm saying? And was dominant while doing it and played baseball. And that's what people don't understand is that you're trying to show him that you can play. Yeah. You're trying to show him that you can be that dog on the field. You're trying to show him that you can score. You're trying it's to show a him that. It's a different. You know it's what I'm saying? Different. You can route somebody up. You, you know what I'm saying? It like, is different. It's bro. different yeah. when your coach did it at a high level. So now you're showing him what you can do. And you know what I'm saying? You're going to listen to everything he got to say because he – what can first you, round. Yeah. What can you? What can, what can you say? say? What can he say that's wrong? In, in football, you know what I'm saying. What What can he say? Not too much, bro. And just in life in general, he's successful, bro. He black and successful. What What's wrong with listening and actually focusing on what he has to say? Because I feel like that's what people get it messed up is that they believe in all this, you know what he what is said on TV and all that, but they don't see the outside of. You know, Coach Prime saying, you know, blase, blase, you need to start doing yeah, this or yeah. you need to implement this into your game. They don't see that. They just see the person on TV trying to promote our team. Yeah, they see to, they you know? see the guy, they see the guy that is wearing sunglasses and hats in a in a, in a meeting and that he's disrespectful. And that's that's what they choose to choose to 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 see. But it, it's like, bro, I see me when I see you. I, I see myself. So Along with that, why would I not want to get to where you at right now? Yeah, um, I, I don't think it's a lot of players that, if you really sat down and think, you could say at the end of the day, yo, he did me wrong when he did such and such, bro. You feel me? It could be a difference of opinion, but I don't think that even his delivery is a problem, too, because I don't think it is a problem. I feel like he's he's giving it to you the way he knows how to give it to you the most real. From where he's come, from, from where he's sitting, real, and it's gonna be yeah. From where he's sit, from where he sees it, filter. you feel me? So even if it is kind of rubs you the wrong way or whatever, there's no sugar coating. There's no yeah. He, he's feelings. not he's trying to. He's trying you. to help you. And he's gonna tell you what you need to hear, and that's just not what Coach Prime. That's what every coach that he's brought onto the staff, or he wouldn't have brought them on. Yeah, and and that's why I feel like this year, it's gonna be a better year because you got coaches that actually are gonna just tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. You just gonna have to take it. You are gonna either do right by it, or you just gonna think the coach is wrong. How, what were some of your favorite coaches, JD? While you was here, man, you know Coach Williams always. Yeah, my dog. That that was my dog, man. Yeah. I felt like we was in that room every day. I ain't you y'all ain't ever come in there, but every day we would start off the uh, we would start off the meeting with a rap battle. Everybody, oh y'all would? Yeah, we would all start I didn't rapping. Know that. We put a we put a beat on before uh, the meeting. That's funny. We start rapping That's some and Jackson then State we, stuff. You feel me? Just get into Look it. Look at man. our stadium. It was just fun. Look at our stadium, bro. Man, our stadium is smooth. Running with Ralphie. I always wanted to roll with <laughs> Ralphie. Ralphie. No, you don't want to do that, bro. I want to roll with Ralphie. 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 I feel like I'm faster than Ralphie. Fans, uh, gonna, fans are gonna get on it. I'm Actually, you are. I don't think Ralphie can like make the whole lap. They be saying Ralphie just be. We never see it because we will be over there with Wayne and stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We'd be over there with Wayne, just turned. <laughs> like, Man, that was it. actually crazy seeing that, though. Man. No, that was That's insane. this game, right? Yeah. This is the Colorado, Colorado State, State game State. at night. Um, Wait, and is I'm this Colorado State? In, this is Nebraska. This oh, is Nebraska. Oh, people that Coach Prime brought in, like, the connections he brought in, I was astounded. Oh, like, it's called Sky's the Limit. Man. I was astounded. <laughs> Like when I right. was literally just sitting there, you feel me? Because I didn't see uh, Lil Wayne walk into the uh, locker room. Really? I really didn't. Like I wasn't like really paying attention yeah. or whatnot. Like I was really just like in my own mode and whatever. So the first time I saw him was when he was right next to Coach Prime when they first walked in, like into the tunnel. And you know I'm at the front with D Mac Tires and all them. And when we looking at it and I'm just seeing him, 
I turned, look, I'm like, oh, oh, you feel me? And I was just like, this is insane. Like, I did not realize, like, like yeah, it was like, a yeah, like he was moment, actually going, like, like, yeah. And he had a mic in his hand, and I'm like, what? You gonna walk us? You out. gonna walk us out? Like that was like Colorado State. I'm not gonna lie. Twelve out of ten, man. Probably the most lit game I've ever played in my life. I say, I can't lie. The, man, what's your favorite game, dude? My favorite game. I mean, obviously, the first game always gonna be a game to where it's like, yeah. all right, you know. But that second game, bro, I met you know one of the coolest, like one of my favorite actresses. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? You know Ghost? Yeah, you like Ghost? Bro, he was Nebraska, sitting at my locker man. chopping it up with me. And Hank. <laughs> Ghost like, just there chilling. Bro, like, he came in. And I look. I'm like, no, that's not There's him. no way. And I look again. I said, Ghost. He turned around. <laughs> you, called, hey, you called him I called him Ghost, Ghost, bro. Ghost. I called him Sick, Ghost. So he came going. over there. What game is it? Set by me, bro. It was episode. And literally, we chopped it up. Three? He was just telling no, me, like, keep going. Yeah. So it's really gonna that be like game. celebrities here throughout the season. For oh, bro, you gonna you gonna have to where you can shake up, bro. Like shake up all these celebrities and all that. Once I seen off, I seen bro. I watched <laughs> Kasa that stream like. Yeah, live last day. Mm-hmm. I seen Offset the next day at y'all game. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was crazy. And that's hey, Offset. Offset was a. Uh, I remember that. I, I one thing that did stand out to me, like Offset the baby, like a lot of guys that's really like. Actually, having having motion in their field, oh, yeah. they they weren't they were the most like to the back ones, like offsets just standing there with his crew and stuff watching the game, just like yeah, you know he's just watching the game. That's what he came there to do. Very Same humble. with the baby, you know what I'm saying? The media blew it up, but they weren't just going out their way. Like yeah, they were turned up when the camera pointed to them, but they weren't on some like the shows about me stuff. They was just chilling. It was crazy. Yeah, and yeah they trying to come to our game. That was crazy about that is. It would be sometimes to where I'm chilling on the sideline. I look to my left. It's offset right there, chilling right next <laughs> to me, bro. I'm like, like, what's going on, bro? And he like, let's go, y'all. Like, he tapping everybody on the back. Like, let's go. Like, he in the game. Like, he feel yeah. like he's a part of the game, oh my part gosh, of the team. Like, this was, was this was the game. <laughs> this was the game. I'm no, telling where, where, you, this was the did game. Did we skip Wayne? No. Nah, they had to show Wayne. I think I skipped him. They on definitely accident. did. There's no way. We have to watch this, bro. He, he's the greatest of all time. Why is it on two? I'm tripping. Does it not show? Does it really start like that? Wow. No, no, no. Okay, so that's the beginning of it. Okay, okay. We got, we got Lil Travis, a married man. Hey, shout out to you, brother. Shout out Congratulations to Travis. on the Congratulations on the, on the, to Travis, man. On the wedding. Not wedding. What is it called? Marriage. The engagement. Oh. Or engagement, engagement, yeah. engagement. I'm sorry, bro. My girl's gonna see this and be like, uh, "You need nah. to get this right, cause we finna be okay." Hey. Who are you telling? Hey, man. <laughs> so hey, let's get to this part real quick. We got Kirk Franklin in the building, man. See, like the amount of celebrities Kirk and just connections y'all brought in was insane to too. School, yeah, Kirk is not coming to another school. <laughs> Look, Cormani. Look, Cormani, Trav. Hold on. on. Are all the episodes of this dropped out already? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, nice. What game is this? See, that's what I'm saying. This is USC. USC. Hey, Dale, when our when our spring break? Oh, so that oh, means it so was on episode, episode three. Twenty. It was episode three. My bad, y'all. We, I, we, I watched it, but I just didn't T-Rex. know they were like kind of yeah. stopped like that. I thought it was one per down. episode. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of crazy. <clears throat> dates on there. That's kind of confusing. though. I can't lie. So talk about, uh, you know, oh, is it on three JD? Yeah, it's episode three. Uh, having cameras everywhere. Has that was that a Who is distraction? For? Both of y'all are in your car too. Like having cameras, you, you came into an environment where that's your first college experience, and that was a norm. Is that's not that's not a norm at other that's schools? That's really not a and norm. And then you coming from other schools, knowing it's not a norm, and then experiencing it being a norm. How was that for both of y'all? Because I, y'all both fared very well yeah. in the camera, and everybody fell in love with to, both of y'all. <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it 100% with you. Yeah, keep it a being. Having a camera on you 100% of the time when you're pra- it makes you practice harder. It makes <laughs> you it makes you play harder. It makes you it just makes you do everything better cuz you're, you're trying to impress the camera. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you, you on one on ones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to you try the person up <laughs> yeah. cuz you're not trying to get embarrassed on yeah. YouTube, especially to all the people that be watching y'all videos. You're not going to have them in the comments. That's like going out that same you. day. Same day. Yeah. So you see in your practice in on real YouTube, time that day. same night you every getting a call. You getting a call in the meeting. You got to call this dude back. Hey, bro, 
You seen what Well Off just posted? You know what I'm saying? Like, you Man. like, Jay, you watch JD, the video why would you yet? fight at practice? Bro, I don't know what you're why talking you about. Why are you yelling at <laughs> I see Coach Nick yelling at you. Like, come on, bro. Coach Nick yelled at everybody, and I love it. He was so energetic and passionate, bro. He's about, he's everything he says he's about, he is about, man. He's a good coach. He's a great coach. Great. Like, he was, the, he was especially, like, wanting to see us really get better. Especially Tajay, the young bull. Tajay. Yeah, he man. loved Tajay. Tajay, he What's, loved Tajay. What people don't know about Tajay is... That is, yep, yep, there it is. They showed it for like three seconds. Oh, my nah, God. No, I feel like he's going to walk it out again. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> old, Yeah. What people don't know about Tajay is me and Tajay came from Little League together, bro. Y'all like, did? Did y'all really? Bro, from Kansas, bro. He like, plays. He was from he Kansas? From 316. Oh, I forgot he Wichita, is from Kansas. Kansas. Like, oh, I got Kansas. pictures in my house right now, bro. We... We in the same little league jersey, bro. Now we playing wow. college ball together. Like, it's so surreal, fam. And it was crazy. His birthday is one apart from mine. One day apart from mine. How what old is bro? 19. Are you 19? And Young you boys. 19 too? Yeah, I'm 19 years old, bro. That's crazy. Y'all boys old. Who old? Old boy. Buddy, I'm 20, 24 years young. Uh, 24 years young. I'm 26. So. I ain't gonna lie. Being around... That's one thing I can say too. Being around more of a team that's Car, more how old you? 21. 21. 21. Yeah. Being around people that's like transfers and that they're older guys, it makes you mature faster. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Cuz you got to think of the age gap difference between you and your high school people and then you in college is you know, Ooh. is way different. And the age gap is going to be even different like once you get to the league as well. Like you got to think right. about that. You going up against 30, 30. 33, 30, 40 year old men, grown men. Nah, facts. My bro, when I first got on that field at UConn, my first game was Michigan at, at <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> bro, I'm like probably two sixty at center. I lining up against three three hundred fifteen <laughs> leads. Three fifteen leads. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And they loud, so I, I I got the ball. I don't hear nothing the quarterback saying. They just in there. They was oh, talking mess. Oh 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 yeah. oh they just in there doing that. He they was talking like, mess in front of you, the D line? Nah, they weren't talking mess. It was more of the crowd. Cause yeah. they was like it's literally just like this. What is yeah. the best crowd both of you guys have played in? Like uh, that I've ever played in? Mm. Yeah, we record right now. Like, you mean when you say best crowd, like biggest or like most impactful? I say, like, you coming in and playing, you like, man, this is too loud. I can't even function. Oh. Mmm. Because you play in the SEC. Yeah. Yeah, they had some. That SEC ball crazy. They had some boys out there. They had some, they had some stadiums out there. Oh, my gosh. What was your favorite one? I'm trying to think. What was your favorite one from our season, though? I think maybe ASU. I like ASU. I, I like, uh, I like uh no 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 I like Washington State, but ASU was yeah. smooth too because the they had nice. the fireworks yeah nice. bro I bro I have a fire video of you walking out, fireworks straight going off no. bro and you like praying out loud, no that's yeah, so I, no I, I have never seen that on <laughs> I got that on my iPad no do you I know, have it on my iPad I would need to see that I say that I need to see that yeah, too the loudest show game too. that we played this past year was Oregon Oregon I was gonna say the loudest game was Oregon oh, shit. the craziest I feel like stadium though and I might be biased but it was UCLA yeah yeah, yeah UCLA, UCLA. Was UCLA. I love UCLA Vermont bro. Rose, bro in the Rose Bowl yeah that was nice that was like a dream of mine growing up as a kid to play in the UCLA Rose Bowl and then I wanted to play at I always wanted to play at University of Florida Stadium. I always wanted to play at the Rose Bowl, and I always wanted to play at USC Stadium. Those are the three I always wanted to go to play in. Bro, UConn, we played uh, Tennessee at ooh, Tennessee, bro. Ooh. Bro, first ooh. play, they they had the ball, they threw a post, bro, it was wide open. No. no. Touchdown crowd went crazy. Insane. Was this Jalen Hyatt, bro? Yeah. It wasn't the Jalen oh. Hyatt. No. no. Was this two years ago or three years ago? Nah, this was uh, last year. Oh, uh, they don't have it already. Nah, in the, he was already in the league. Nah, it was last year. Uh, who was that quarterback? What's his name? Milton. Yup. I was going to say, it wasn't Henderson. And Where? then, um, well, was about, you, y'all were talking about UCLA. Yeah. I want to talk about, like, after the game, bro, what happened? They broke in, took taking stuff. Like, what happened? Apparently, folks was going through our locker room while we was in the stadium and whatnot. Folks got their chain snatched. Me personally, I can't speak on it because I didn't get anything stolen. But I got I, I got close, I got close to snatched. like 
four thousand in cash stolen from me out of my bag. I I had a I actually and I don't even care, bro. It is what it is. I went shopping with Bucky and I went I had cash in my bag, in my backpack, or in my Louis in like a smaller bag inside of my backpack. They didn't take my iPad, they didn't take my AirPods, they didn't take anything that could be tracked. Yeah. They didn't take new clothes and stuff like that that I had bought there. They strictly took the cash. They took the, they took the like the envelope and they like left the receipt. But it's like how how did they know? How did they know that on my or maybe they had time to go through everything? But it's just like so like specific to where it's like because I know people that I'm not gonna speak on that had money in their bag like way way more than me. Yeah, and they left it. So they there was just, other valuables that were in that locker room that belonged to prominent people on the team or coaches that they left. They saw and they left it because they. I feel like they knew, like, oh, this is too hot. Like, bro, are we making mm-hmm. this shit too hot, bro? Yeah. Like, come on, on a mission for sure. But it's crazy because they stole Cam's chain. Bro, that's his whole logo, gang. Did they ever like end up finding who it was? Yeah. What did they, no? what did they 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 were they returned some stuff? I never got my money back, of course. But they returned some stuff and I think they returned it because they just knew. Like one all of our stuff is recorded, bro. So Cam Cam is in videos before the game with his chain on. Amari's yeah. in videos before the game with his chain on, as well as DMAC. So it's documented they had their chains before that game. So if you were then to go to sell it and those pictures have been blasted everywhere, you're trying to pawn somebody's chain. Like, why would you steal? Why would you steal? I just don't understand. Why would you steal a chain that's like Easily custom traceable. made? Yeah. Like, why why would you steal this this chain? Like, it's custom made. It's made for somebody. Like, what can you do with that? And it has the jeweler's name in the back and everything. No. Like, that's just a bad look. And I feel like. The, the backlash that whoever got from that was just an ultimate bad look because it's like you take it from people that's actually trying to motivate people. What's the name of the recruit? D- they said it was some recruits, but I don't know. I don't know if that. Do you think that's true? I just don't know, bro. I really don't know what to believe, bro. Honestly, I feel like. JD, you didn't have anything taken from you? I had a Jackson, uh, Jackson chain taken. Oh, you I did? I had a little NIL deal with Jackson that I got mm. like a chain and a pullover. But shoot, I mean, at the end of the day, like, what can I do? I'm not gonna go back and like try to chase the dude down and try try to get the chain back or whatever. Like, I feel like at the end of the day, it was just a trial given to us by God, and that's just something that we just gotta get through and get past. You feel me? Like, just gotta be more cautious <coughs> and understand. Like, what? Nothing's ever truly secure. If you wanna make sure something's secure, either don't bring it or like make sure you have like a real secure place for it. What were you about to say, Dill? I want to ask this to, like, every single one of y'all, yeah. you know? What What do y'all see y'all next three months looking like as far as just how things are going to go these next three months? Shoot. Yeah, you, I was about to say, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not, not just football. I'm talking about life in general. Like, what are you expecting? What is your goals? Yeah. That's, that's the main. What is your goals for the next three months? Honestly, bro, just get better as a a person. Like, communicate with other people more. Yeah. It's just just having the courage to go up to people and talk to them. Just have a conversation with them, not be in the shell all day. Mm-hmm. Like, I be around y'all all day, like, people on campus. Because, you know, we got online cloud, never been on campus. Yeah. Just go out there, talk to them, how they, they doing. Because they might, they might be going through something. Yeah, yeah. Some so like just getting out of the shell, communicating more, really. Cause you never know, bro. This is bolder. You never know if who you can run into. Who you can run into. Foundations, people, long term friendships. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The connections you can make out here are real. Yeah. What about you, JD? Because your situation is a little bit different compared to all of us. Your three months are going to look drastically different than ours. Yeah. So what... what you, and also with that two-part question, we, maybe we should have asked it at the beginning, but what are you currently working toward and how does your current like life kind of look like right now in preparation for your So goals? currently my life right now is consistent of working out, uh, training for my pro day, which is next week on Thursday. Uh, I train over at Pivotal with Pat. I'm signed to Peter Schaefer and all of them. And... Honestly, it's just 
a grind. It's seriously a grind. When I tell you, it's a different grind. It's not the craziest grind I've ever been through, but it's such a different grind. And like you finding, you working different things in your body that you never thought you would work. You really fine tuning the small muscles in your body. You really fine tuning just like different things just to be able to work for the drills of pro day, you know? And like once you realize, oh, you working these muscles and everything and just working like these kinds of movements, these kinds of just like lateral side movements, being able to look and turn and just, you know, just get your body stronger in general and everything overall. Uh, as you go through that, like you really learn, oh, this is how I can really become a better football player by doing this, by incorporating this into even though it's not made for football, I can incorporate this into my drills, you know. So like say what's take the weird example. I was going to say, what's the weirdest thing? That you did that you was like all right bro this is just like what is this even doing no nah, like okay. nah I, I know i know look at dill turn look at dill dylan turn. dylan all right. on the stage look at desi banks look at mari desi banks in the background <laughs> <laughs> look at mari was up mari looked like he was in the section bro i have to go back bro, was that mari. was crazy bro bro because like if we lost that <laughs> bro i'll be mad as i know you were from the dmc <laughs> You know me, JD, bro. Yeah. I, was I know you were gonna get mad. Bro. I was gonna be mad as hell. If Come on, look at hey, we was all turned. <laughs> look at Cam and smoke. smoke. Hey, bro, bro, when I tell y'all the relief, not even the relief, <laughs> just Dylan, like what were you doing? You was bro, kind of I was so happy we won. Cause <laughs> like, you know, the last two, we won, Dude, the, last was two. We won the last oh fifty gosh. seconds of the game, bro. Yeah, Jimmy scored. Like, yeah, bro, we was supposed to lose. Okay, like, yeah, we gotta run it back from the beginning. Damn, after Chad got hurt. That just turned the whole game like just yeah. weird vibes. Look at Dill. Hey, Dill over there. Hey, hey, he was going. Hey. To work. Hey. he was going. How was? Hey, that how boy trying to dance like he from Florida. That's what it is. He was. <laughs> yeah, Curry, what'd you say? How was the team in that moment when uh when Trav got hurt? Like, a lot of people didn't even know what was going on because that was at the end of the bench where I was at. So probably people down there probably didn't even know how bad it was. I got a video of him. The full like when he got hit like right right there, yeah, he passed out like three times, in the you know the chair where you where you make a big play you sit in the chair they put the glass on yeah. you turn up, Trav was knocked out bro he was out of there so I just knew about the hit I didn't realize like Trav no nah, he was like, he was gone I knew he was hurt but I didn't know about all that yeah like, I was I scared I was like because I never seen Travis hurt bro yeah that that's was, my brother that was the first time like I I really didn't I was not scared know what was going on because. I was on the sideline, but all I see is, you know what I'm saying, after the hit, I seen Shador go over there and, you know, pop pop it to the, you know, the defensive mm -hmm. player. Yeah, he started turn like, th turning up. But, you know, after the game, that's when I was like, you know, we really going to be without 12. Like, yeah. it's going to be a whole lot different stuff going on because, you know, people don't know, like, the start of the season, Trav was on a good pace to win the Heisman, bro. Yeah. And he so definitely like, was. After that happened, it was just like, for Shador too, it was just a lot, lot changed, bro. Cause, you know, although he's one player, bro, he has greatness. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, make a big impact on the team. Big impact. Huge so impact. like just losing him, those those games definitely was a, a huge loss. But that's that was when other people were supposed to come up for sure. Bro, I'm telling y'all, bro, I was so so tuned in to y'all season when I had a whole season. For real? Starting career, bro. I'm tuned in to Colorado football, bro. I'm watching yeah. Bucky stuff at the practice. So, what y'all think is our best colorway? Like, best colorway? Color I like the first game, bro. Mm. Like first the first game, game was. Hard. I like that all white. Yeah. First game is like the hardest to me. Like I like all white, bro. I can't all lie, white. Bro. Cool. I felt icy. I felt all icy. Might all, think I'm crazy. all white in that black. Y'all might think I'm crazy, bro. Come, Come on, on, bro. Gray, gray. White white unders, those that was the best combo to me. Bro. You said gray, gray, was, white unders. Was it was it USC we wore that? Yeah, it was. look at look at Trav, bro. He's gray, sick, gray bro. white unders. It was, bro. We yeah, wore yeah. that was the hardest. No, it was Arizona. We wore that colorway. I think it was. Uh, it was. He's crazy. It right? was USC Damn. too. It was USC too. <laughs> you watching it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah USC, yeah. you wore gray twice, bro. I'm telling you, the gray I with remember. the white. Yeah, it popped different. I yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No cap. No, I like that colorway. The colorway, the gray colorway was smooth. The white colorway was my favorite. Black was hard at night, especially at night. That blackout at night, oh my gosh, that I like that one. That boy Trav and he a got a whole onesie. Bro, he bro. always does that game. Bro, but he didn't he come? Up, didn't he come up here in a onesie? <laughs> he comes up here in a onesie. Oh 
once yeah, at least once a week. Yeah. At Girl, least once a week. One thing about Trav since I've been here, I noticed when workouts, football is done with, you will not see that boy no more. That was over with. You will not see him no more. <laughs> it's over with. Bro. Only time I see bro is on, on my TikTok. <laughs> bro, gotta play that game, bro. That's God. funny. You Only time stream. I see bro is where he's on my TikTok. Like, what is he wearing? <laughs> Wait, is that a wait, burger? Wait, wait, what that is that? Bur- he's wearing a burger. burger? It's a burger backpack. A burger. a burger backpack, bro. Fam, gotta or get some... to streaming, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, he did get active on stream with that outfit. Yeah. yeah, he's going to the doctor in that. He's going to the doctor in that outfit game. He's different, That's bro. That's crazy. He actually is who he who he says he is, bro. That's how <laughs> you're, you're gonna get the same, Travis. <laughs> yeah. That Oregon locker room was small as hell. Man. Nah, they did y'all dirty on that one. That was bad. I know they got an extra locker room, yeah. but that was crazy. I don't even want to talk about that game, bro. Cause how do you feel after that game? It's or a good, honestly, it's a how good you learning feel? opportunity. It's a good learning yeah. opportunity, honestly. Nah. Like. I've been on the worst side of a lot of worst you games. You see yourself, dude? You feel me? You've been on the opposite side of a lot of worst games, JD? Yeah. It's just, it's uh, just it's just hard, you know? You like, remember that uh, Clemson game where they beat Georgia Tech 73-7? to seven? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was part of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you a hell of a fool. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> if you need help, I don't, I don't wish contact you, me. No, like, it's not even Getting blown out like, a different type of feeling, like... When you on the sideline and you see them constantly scoring, so like, so what hurts more? I've always I've always wondered this. What hurts more for you, a blowout game, or when you lose by like one or two points in the last second? Which one hurts oh, one, more? One or one or two points because yeah. it was right there. Yeah, you're right now, there. This the question though. You cold? You cold? You ready to go home? TV timeout. Come on. Oh my God! Watch it just stay. TV time out. Come Watch it just stay. You don't know about Watch TV time out. Watch it stay. Watch it just stay. Wazoo. You're talking TV about time Watch it just stay. Imagine Wazoo. you fly all the way to Washington, right? Idaho. That's for one. We flew into Idaho. We flew into Idaho, Idaho. Flew into and we Idaho. stayed in the most na- terrible. We stayed in the most stickiest town on earth. Was that was that the one where the uh, the hotel workers were outside, like? No, oh, that, was they, Cali. That, was that was Cali. Cali. The they were in the protesting. Bathroom. Remember that? They were, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> but they yeah, were, my I have a video. Was flooded, right? His oh, bathroom, but his bathroom toilet was oh, flooded no. with bubbles coming out of it. Wait, bro. Bubbles. Where, where was this at? UCLA. Didn't put y'all in nothing, bro. We in Pasadena. No, it was a good. It was a great hotel. Great hotel. It was just like the rooms. The, yes, bro. Yeah, like bro. so, the staff was apparently on like uh, what was that strike? The staff was on a strike or something. And so, like, nothing was getting done. Like, the toilets and everything were backed up and all that. So, it was crazy. No, nah, I remember walking in UCLA to my hotel room. I'm just chopping it up with Carter because we was roommates. Yeah. Shout Ooh. out Carter, man. Shout out Carter. My, that's my dog, man. We came that's in. Dive, yeah. Bro, I, I literally opened the door. Yeah. And I stepped. And when I stepped, I felt something cold on my foot. I'm like... <laughs> He looked looked down, down, bro, bro, and there's just bubbles all the way to, like, dang near my knees, bro. Dude, I remember we were on the same floor, because I remember you walking out of your room and me and Taj walking down the hall to look in there. Bro, when I tell you, it looked like a sea of foam was on the floor. Like, if that was actual design, that would have been cool as heck. Hella. In a a hotel room. Hella. But (laughs) to know that the bubbles were coming out the toilet just made it, like... It was nasty. It was disgusting. Because I wasn't even thinking at the time, so I picked it up and was like... <laughs> and then like, you looked and saw where it was coming yeah, from. Oh my! I gosh. just felt disgusted, and so we got up. We got up. <laughs> out of nah, you're right. I would feel disgusted too. I don't. Did you have no socks on, or you had socks? You had to have socks. Oh, on. He, he, was tra- he we stepped in it with the socks. If you stepped in it with the socks, that's nasty, bro. Oh, I would, I would, that would make on. you feel like you're just a filth, bro. I would. I would have to take He's a shower like, right, right after that. No, we, bro, you gonna? I already know Dylan. Dylan's type to be like, bro, like you gonna start getting mad, like, bro, what is this, bro? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but like, why is it? Why is it flooded though? Like, why is it in my room? Bro? Why is it in my room? <laughs> it just felt like I was. Why is it in my room, sir? We don't know. Like, it's just doing it. But like, like, 
who's gonna fix this? Like, <laughs> this is not normal, bro. I can see you know, Dill start, Dill gonna start smelling. <laughs> bro, like, it's always me, bro. Joe, just chill. It's always me, bro. Damn. Just chill, dude. Dang. Nah, I I be peeping Dill when he be he be a little heated when we walk up to the dining hall. It be some trash food. <laughs> oh, he get him so blown. I'll be right behind. He be like, bro, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Bro, it's the face too. It's the bro. <laughs> he get to the doing this right here, bro. <laughs> Y'all oh, know bro. me though, bro. Like I can't do that, bro. Now this is crazy, bro. How I've been here probably four months, four, four, three months, and I already connected no, with these boys, lie, bro. The food here be hitting like nine times out of ten, though. But the times it don't, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a hundred percent. You don't think so? It be it, it has its days, bro. Like it to where I'm day. like. Come on, like no way. You don't eat fast food. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. I see. You only hear, see me like Chick Fil A. I yeah. had to stop these people on Well Off Media's fans bullying me into losing my stomach. It wasn't every even t- them. It was. Time. Was it Coach Nick? It was Coach Nick. It it was Coach Nick Coach would just Nick. always be like that to say that, like, bruh, like bro, why do JD, you have a stomach, bro? Like JD, <laughs> like when are you gonna get in shape, JD? JD, when you go? You love football, uh-huh. JD? JD, JD, when you gonna get in shape, JD? JD, you said you was gonna get rid of the stomach in summer. You lied. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he just going straight for your throat, like, all right, bro. But I mean, shoot, he pushed me to get rid of it, so it's gone now. You feel me? But it was just funny. It was just like a running joke the entire like season. Yeah. And I got rid of it at one point, but then it just came back and it was hard to get rid of it. Cause I just felt like I don't know, I couldn't get the weight off, yeah. but I couldn't get it back in the right way. So y'all Better telling me y'all don't be getting a little triggered when the food ain't hitting for real? Nah, I definitely bro. do. I mean, not really. I definitely gotta, do. Uh, nah, I, I definitely do, bro. Mm. Because it's like, I got to speak on it because it's not even Chef's fault, bro. They it's cut not. Chef's budget, bro. When Chef had that budget, look at this, gang. He was, bro, he cooked tomahawks. Look at this, bro. Wait, why they cut his budget? Because Chef was going dumb. <laughs> they probably just was like, they yeah, didn't see the. They oh didn't see the. God. Look. Oh y'all was. Yeah, 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 they didn't. They probably was just well, like, all right. I ain't you feel me? Maybe that's stream. what it. What, what what the situation was. Yeah. But he was going dumb when he had what he needed. Yeah. I wasn't here. We can't. Let's let's let's, so let's get know. that straight though. Like Chef, he's not a bad chef though. No. Oh, no. no. Chef no. Chef Solomon, no. you're him, bro. He's from Garland, Texas. Shout out to you, bro. You do what you do, bro. You're great at what you do. Nah, we. It, I think it was on a mat drill day. You know, we burn all them calories and stuff. I come up there. They had crab legs and sausage. I'm like, where the calories at? And who who finna sit there and eat crab legs all day? Yeah. A lot of people did, though. I think you was eating them, dude. Smashing. I can't do, <laughs> I can't, I can't do that, bro. Not, okay. Nah. I, I be wanting like some snacks or something. I feel you on that. Because I just lost all that. Something I feel more eat some feeling. crab. Yeah. They used to serve steak every day last year. Every day. They need Every to bring the Chipotle day. back, bro. You messed with that? She don't. <laughs> that was the one of the He's days different. I was like, bro. He's different. <laughs> you different, Come on, bro. bro. I'm not going to lie. I got to side with him on this hey, one. Dude, you you dude, ain't want to go make yourself a burrito bro. and That's just like, dude, you ain't this, just want to get yourself like a hey, double steak bro. burrito. This is no hey, hate. Bro. This no. is no hate to This is just funny, bro. Yeah. Me, bro, I don't know. I guess I'm just a picky eater, fam. Like. I gotta have that soul food. He walk up there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he got mad. He actually got mad. No, he, he, he got like, oh my yeah. gosh, bro. Like, bro. like, like Dylan, just calm down, look, bro. Imagine after a practice, you just ran so much, bro. Like, yeah. you burned a lot. And then you go up there, and you just see something you ain't really know. It's not gonna hit for real, like, yeah, bro, bro. <laughs> Dill, you can't complain too much, bro. Dill eats free at. At least two places in Boulder. Yeah. And never puts anybody and so else on. If, if so he has options. Oh. Buddy. <laughs> nah, you put me on one time. There we go. I put, I put him on. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you're not at the spot, though. You said, well, you ain't never oh, put look, look me who it on. is. Oh, Dylan. Dylan. You got you got an interview? <laughs> I was on JD, they didn't interview? I made no, the cut. I never got an interview. So, hey, he's doing a recent people interview. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> that actually is kind of crazy. Y'all didn't talk to JD at all? And y'all talked to Coach Sal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Appreciate no, I love Coach Sal. Coach Sal was probably the, one of the realest coaches I've ever had, though. He loved football. He bro. loved football. He loved football. More than anything. Yeah, but the things he would say it. about football was insane. <sighs> Coach Sal can never be repeated or replicated. <laughs> no filter. No filter. I coach Art look like he like 30-something. 
Yeah, cause he it's just what he when he had his hair his haircut. Look at Josh. Dang, Josh had a whole beard. Josh had that beard. Josh shaved. He's skinnier now too, bro. Bro, fit more and more fit. Yeah, Josh. That's crazy. Soda. Yeah, I went. I went to high school. With you went him. To, how how was going to high school with Josh? And you went to high school with who? J Mill too. Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't gonna say I went to high school with Josh. I was just around because my pops was a coach, so okay. I knew all. I knew Lavisca, Katie, him. Yeah. Y'all know LaVisca, right? LaVisca no, Chanel. I don't know who that is. He played up here. He went to he played for the Panthers now. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Number two. Yeah. 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 His brother Vontae. Yeah. Yeah. My brother was friends with him. Yeah. yeah. He used to come by the crib all the time. They lived in Grilling Heights. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. Small world, bro. I swear yeah. I be knowing too many people, bro. It'd be scaring me sometimes. That's that co- that's that country stuff. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, being from Kansas, I don't know. When you go like, back home, when all of y'all go back home. Do you do you resent seeing people or do you look forward to it? Does it bother you now? Does it not bother you? Or I don't know if that's even a thing. You might not even care about that. Go type first stuff. on this one, bro. I want to hear this. Nah, um, I forgot which teammate said. I think it was Walter. Walter said, "Yeah, I'm gonna come to the. I'm gonna come to Texas." I was like, "Nah, bro. I see. I see you up here enough." Oh, it's like, me? yeah. It's like when I'm up here with y'all. It's, yeah, it's my my boy's time, yeah. but I'm finna go see, see my pops and mom. No, I be doing the same thing, and they be like, bro, you fake, bro. You don't answer the phone, and my, bro. And my boy's back at the crib, because it's like, I don't even talk to them. I yeah, talk you don't to them, to but it's them. like, yeah. You and Kyle, you away in Colorado, they in Texas. Uh, that's real, though. That's at least, you, I like how you make time for that, and you know that's still important to me. Just because I'm not around anymore. Like, when I'm here, I'm here. Like, you feel me? Like, yeah, it's still the same. It's still the same. I'm just have in a different location right now. Yeah. But it's all the same. And when I'm here, it's the same that you remember me as. Because you got to think about it. We spend like a whole year literally together. Damn near, yeah. Yeah. Together. We only get like two months off from each other. Yeah. Not even two months, a month. That's why now, even with the season just starting, yeah, I have class and different things where it's not just me just wanting to dip, but I, I'm I'm cherishing like being more in and out at least up until now because I know when it starts like it's not it's nonstop. You will be around your brothers every single day, mm-hmm. and that's not a bad thing. But I like always remembering like what I do it for. Obviously, you can do that without going and seeing it, but if I have the opportunity to, you know, why why wouldn't I? Because I remember working a normal job where it doesn't matter what I want. Yeah. You gonna come to work when they say come to work, and that's what your schedule looks like. But if I have the opportunity to go see my people, and go and go be around them, and still be in their lives, like my sister just had a baby, you know, being being and seeing yeah. moments like that, you know what I'm saying? Like that's actually cool too. Like and mixing that with the football stuff, that makes you more happy because you really know, like, okay, I'm not just. I'm not so locked in that I, you know, I just neglect other people. You feel me? And I know everybody doesn't have that opportunity. So I, I will say I'm blessed because a lot of the players, they probably want to go home as much as they want to. They probably missing so much stuff. I can't lie. But they can't. They locked in or, you know. Uh, I mean, for me, I ain't going to cap when I, I like it here, too. Like, another reason is because when I want to go see my family, I go see my family. Yeah. Like I, when I want to go see my friends, I, I go see my friends. We got, we leave, we get done on Thursday, and Friday I'm out, and and it's not every single week or any time I can. I mean, it's once every blue moon. You know, sometimes you need that reset button. Yeah. Um, you know, from where you from, you know, just to remember where you came from. Honestly, honestly, that that's just for me. Cause no, I, I like that. Derby, Kansas, bro. Nobody know Derby, Kansas, unless you've been to Derby, Kansas, or, you know what I'm saying, heard about Derby, you know? So, yeah. just going back, um, it just makes you feel Look like at this. it is different. I don't mean to interrupt you. This is say. a pivotal moment in our season. This is the first time we, uh, it was a boiling point. This is after the game in Oregon, in the locker room, immediately <laughs> chaos, erupts into chaos. What's both of y'all's thoughts in this moment? Um. Uh, where was I? I was just looking. We're gonna go back. I think I was around the corner from this moment when Bishop was yelling. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I remember this. I was looking like, man, we just, just be got real. forty ball. Nobody should be talking. We need to get on this bus, go home, bro. Go, and and we had practice the next day, didn't we? Yeah, bro. We did. I'm not like as soon as everybody started yelling, bro. I just 
I should. I had to walk out. I just literally just changed and got on the bus. Yeah, I wasn't even in here. Actually, I, I was. I walked time. because this is when we first got in there. Yeah. That's why everybody still has everything on. I walked in, got my stuff, and I walked out. And I, I hate, hate on the bus. I hate, I hate it. I, I hate it. I there. hate it when folks get to yelling after a loss. I hated it, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not somebody that's gonna respond to that. I hate that. <laughs> like all that rah rah after the game. I can't do it. Like I love them boys to death, but I can't do it. Uh, how, how you feel, Dell? About this? Yeah, about situations <laughs> where. Maybe people might get to yelling. It might be uh, after a loss or whatever. Just the style of leadership in general or just the interaction in general of the screaming because that's kind of mm-hmm. prevalent in every day. There's going to be guys that that's their form of communication on the day-to-day in practices, which is the rah-rah. Then in the games, you know, there's always, you know, the people at halftime that's going to pop it too. How do you, do you re- are you receptive to that? Do you think it has its place? Do you think it can I be think, useful? I think every single thing has its place. Especially when you're in a game or at a game, everything has an emotion. Like every emotions is running high, bro. You about to play the number? Well, it was four at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but my thing, my <laughs> thing is here's my the expectation. Thing. Yeah, like, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. So much going on, bro. So honestly, after we lost, bro, like JD said, bro, I was trying to just get on the bus, go home. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, when it comes to the raw raw and everything, like. I don't mind if you do that. Like, I love if you do that, actually. Like, if you show that as your leadership. But do it throughout the whole game. Yes. Don't, don't just do, do it, it at the, at end, the end when, end when we down. already lost and we in the locker room. Why are we yelling now? Man. Like, uh, if you're going to be that leader and step up and want to be that person, like, you have to do it the whole time. You can't pick and choose when you want to be a leader. And that's what it what and was I so feel, hard last year about it. That's what I feel like. Yeah, like, we was – we didn't have anybody that really – came in like well we had some but like a lot more people should have been coming in day to day hit the grind like just learn how to just be better like just yeah. learn how to study the plays just learn how to get into your playbook i think what hurt us the most last year is yeah we were a team but we weren't united as one we weren't and and that's what i feel like hurt us the most what's and the distinction showed after that what's game. the distinction for you versus a, being a team and united i altogether. say for me I can well. I, I always have to base stuff from high school because that's all only thing I know. So mm-hmm. I know from a high school's perspective, we were with each other every day as far as eating. Like we did everything together. Like yeah. it doesn't matter what we were doing, we was together. Mm-hmm. So I think this year, I think more players on the team is trying to make that a big thing to where we have to be with each other to make this happen. Yeah, where it's never gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And so. That's why every weekend I try to spend the most time with my teammates. Yeah. If if it's not going somewhere, it's coming over my house. Yeah. Even you doing know? stuff like this, bro, now it gives me more of a thing like it's not now it's not even about it's not even about the content, bro. It's just yeah. about the action of being with your brothers. No, it definitely. might not even be for the content. This could be a, a factor that helps another player. Players get to actually know about each other. You never know. Bro, People could be watching your episode, or you could be on an episode with one of your teammates, and you actually learning more about him than you have in five minutes of conversation yeah. with him in passing. And you'll yeah. never even get to interact. Because people from Derby, bro, literally call me on the daily, like, bro, I just watched y'all video, bro. Like, man, like, I'm trying to get there one yeah, day, bro. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, man, like, we really inspiring people out here, yeah. and that's what be making me happy too. Because that's another reason why I came here, man. Like, you're not. Yeah, of course, you know what I'm saying? Every college, you know, is going to have their fans and stuff like that. But we're actually inspiring some other than just football players. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's, that's something big for me. Nah, that's, that's how it be for real because, you know, you be working out, you get a call from your boys. Yo, I just seen you on TikTok. Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy that I'm seeing you, seeing you here at the school. Yeah. It's like it's unreal. And now you're on the phone with bro, and he like, man, I just saw you, bro. Yeah, just, it's unreal. Uh, Can yeah. you tell the people the, another reason why you came to the school? Because I feel like your off the field aspirations, oh. are, play they're so in line with why you chose to come here down to the T. Yeah. And I don't feel like people actually know about your plan, bro. It's so much bigger than football, and that's what I have to tell everyone when I first, you know, signed to come to Colorado. Like, I've seen Coach Prom come to Little League practice, leave Little League practice early, hop on a flight, go to NFL Network, talk on TV the same night, come back 
and was at practice the next day and act from, like it was from nothing a kid. and act like it was nothing. And so coming here, it was like, you know, I'm seeing somebody that I want to do the same thing as him when he was on NFL Network and he was talking and, you know, interaction, yeah. you know, just, just stuff like that. I want to be on that big stage and doing commentary so I could be around the sport I love for the rest of my life. You know, you, you see Stephen A. Smith and you see like like players now like LaShawn McCoy and, and and players like, you know, yeah. They just talking and, and Mark Ingram and just stuff like that. Like yeah. you seeing them interact more with the sport, not just playing. Yeah. But they're actually yeah, talking playing. about it. Yeah. They're inspiring people, you know, that's inspiring me. Like, you know, I, Mark Ingram came to our practice, you know, like like after the first game I wanna say. Yeah. And it's just seeing him like, Whoa. You know, you're doing what I want to do, you know, after football is over with. So just having a future after football, that's why I picked this the most because who has the biggest connections yeah. to get you to where he was working at? Come on now. You know, if you, if football don't work out, Coach Prom, you know, I'm trying to get on NFL Network. Is there any internships I can, you know, yeah, apply for? exactly. Yeah, I can get you linked in with Blase Blase. Next thing you know, you on first take. Yeah. For real. You know what I'm saying? Talking just like this. Arguing back and forth with Stephen A. Smith, Smith maybe. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So just different stuff. It like wasn't that, just the bro. football. It, it was, was just never. like the connections aspect. Yes. What could really like what could really make me into a different person? What could really build me and set my future up for success was, in the next and long term? It was never about football because yeah. the, the school I was committed to before was Notre Dame. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking about the bigger picture now, bro. Yeah. I'm not just thinking about a football season, bro. Yeah. This football is going to happen like that, bro. And it's going to end just like that, too. Yeah. So just being somebody other than this football stuff, bro, that's what I want to be, bro. Because I want to be a dude that dressed clean, going to work every day and yeah. be happy about what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's one big I thing. I like how you said be happy about what you do because everybody, when they talk about jobs, no one ever talks about, is it going to make you happy? But then that's the main Main criticism, people. That's the first and main criticism someone has about their job, that it don't make them happy. But when they look for jobs, no one, you never hear somebody saying, "Nah, it's gonna be fun." Like that's rare that you hear people saying that yeah. when it comes to getting money to provide for your life. Yeah. But that's the main thing that actually keeps you, you know, what I'm saying fulfilled. And I've been on the other side where it's like you working and you don't, it's not fun. But now. Bro, I, I this is my job, bro. I'm like, what? That's what I was gonna say, bro. Like, that's your job, crazy, bro. Your job, only hard part about your job is getting up when we getting up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the time you getting up, we making you laugh when you when the cameras on it. <laughs> facts. Yeah, that's it's facts. It's crazy. Bro. It, it's facts because it's real life. What I feel like when it comes to like jobs and everything, you gotta find something that you like truly passionate about. Yeah. So like you said, you've worked before in a job that like yeah. you didn't feel like you liked or whatever, mm-hmm. but You've been you said before you were had this podcast system, this is how you started out. Yeah. You said everything like the camera system and everything that you set up, that's something that you truly want to do. Yeah. Something that you truly invested in and want to put your time and your energy and your effort into it. Cause it's something that you find effortless. It's mm-hmm. something that you find fun. It's something that you find like it brings joy to your life, like Dylan nah, said. For real. And that's what I feel like a lot of people don't understand. Like you have to find something that you truly, truly passionate about. And go after that with everything. Nah, facts. Like, you don't got to get a conventional job. You ain't got to, you don't have to always go to college. Like, I recommend college, but you don't, college isn't the only way through. It's there's definitely always, not. Di- there's always different ways to make it, and there are different ways to go about your life and still be successful without having to get a college degree. You I have me? a gripe with people that actually think college is, it's mostly with college kids, bro. And yeah. I'm, I'm about to say something to y'all right now. Y'all need to, understand that a degree does not owe you anything the world does not owe you anything a degree does not guarantee you anything that's a better statement a degree does not guarantee you anything and the world does not owe you anything just because you have a degree in this field doesn't mean that your workplace is guaranteeing you or owes you a a position to get paid for that or to get paid what you feel like so you thinking that I'm going to just go through college and get my degree and I'm going to be straight. That's not how life works. Because how, how have I been able to make some of my dreams come true and I haven't even graduated yet? And for the longest part, when I started going back to school, I felt like maybe it's holding me back. But how could it hold me back when I'm, 
when I'm excelling in, in, in other fields, that's because in my head, I was equating de- degree to success. Yeah. But it's just like, what is success to you? When I walked the stage, I would have already passed 100,000 subscribers, which was a milestone for me and a lot of expi- aspiring YouTubers just watching from the outside as someone that, you know, was just a beginner. Yeah. And, and that's that's what we've brought. That's what we brought the, the platform to. And we've been able to reach a lot of people. That yeah. that to me is success, bro. I but and I, I'm wary of saying that because it makes it seem like only accomplishments can be success. It can be other things, but for me, I'm more proud of that than anything. That all I prayed for, I said before I graduate, I just want a profitable business. I always wanted to work for myself after I graduated. I was gonna go. Well, I was gonna go to law school get my JD, but I was gonna open my own practice and stuff like that yeah but it's like now i could just hire lawyers that it just doesn't make sense like you don't always have to go to school yeah it goes deeper than you just don't always have to go to know how to do such and such you can know so i then, actually so do need to go to school for that but i can hire somebody to do that it's yeah. a different generation so then how would you yourself how would darius sanders define success Success for me is controlling my own time. Right now, I don't feel like I, I all the way control my time, but I actually I feel like I control my time more than 90% of well, I don't know 90, but I mean to the extent to the the extent maybe not, but if you just hear what I'm saying, I feel like I get to control my time more than 90% yeah. of the normal workforce. So you feel it, like being able to make your own schedule and being able to make no thing. yeah being able to make your own schedule no I always wanted to be in con- in control of my time bro yeah and that to me was I guess even if you are on a schedule maybe when you're when you're when your time is being put into something that is bigger than you and actually matters and you actually care about yeah then it no longer feels like that time doesn't belong to you because you're fully invested yeah so it may not even be like okay, I just have all this freedom. It may be like, oh, I actually care about this. Yeah. So I'm just chalking it to that. It's a, de- it's a deposit, daily deposit. I, I, now that I got to do it, I get to do it. So I get you, to go make you some consider, content. Would you consider all of Colorado's success, successes in your right as well? What you mean? Like any success, like the Colorado just in general. Like oh, it's definitely Colorado a success. Team, any success it's that you guys have, whether it be on or off the field, would you attribute that to like, not a personal success, but a success that you feel like you were able to be a part of. No, for sure. Because my brother, uh, Deion Sanders, said it best. When I win, we all win. You know I'm rocking with you. When I win, I we all know. win. You yeah. know I'm rocking with you. That's how I feel. Yeah. When I win, we all win. You know I'm rocking with you. When Shador gets a new car, bro, I feel like I just got a new car, bro. Yeah. What you talking about? My, my brother's walked in the fashion, Louis Vuitton fashion show. I feel like I walked in the Louis Vuitton fashion Man. show. Like, bro, what you mean? When I win, we all win. When I win, everybody that's sitting next to me wins. We lit. Like, we're making each other more lit. But that's the biggest thing, bro. Like, you hit 100K at the crib, bro. You yeah. Remember, like, yeah. I was I at was, Dylan's crib. You know what I'm saying? He hit a 100K, 100K at, at his crib. crib I'm watching it on that's his TV. You know that's that's crazy. Like, you know, like, seeing stuff like that. that you seen it like, like okay. You no. Know? Like, it, it really makes you, you know what I'm saying, yeah. go harder, you know, want better for yourself. Definitely. Okay. okay. Uh, based off that question, J.D., how does seeing success at Colorado affect you for all y'all? Now? Because some people, seeing success hey. was a route to hate on somebody. So, me, are you talking about me, how I saw success last year, or how I see success as Colorado is right now? How does success at Colorado affect you, whether it be teammates whether it be people in passing whether it be your head coach being on the cover of sports illustrated how does seeing those things and being a part and being a reason that played into that affect you you knowing why well, i'm a part of this movement like yeah it feel, so it filled me with pride everything yeah. that happened every success because you could be proud of what you do i was so proud to be a part. like people don't understand i was proud to be a part of georgia tech i was proud to be a part of arkansas i was truly proud to be a part of like university of colorado i was really proud to be a part of like this team that we were on i was proud to be you know on the side along with shadur with travis yeah with everybody with offer dog my boy charlie you shout out me? charlie yeah. shout out charlie man shout just everybody star. that i was out there with like i don't Born think like star. the energies that we 
That's Coach Prime I called a porn I star. I can't get over that. I'll never get over that. <laughs> Co- he did say that. That is I, going to be a I, story I asked I Charlie tell my on camera if he felt comfortable with that. He said yes. I'm, I'm so telling, I'm he telling my children. Cool with that. <laughs> That's sick though, right? I'm telling my children. Not on some real stuff. JD, you're going to be mad at us, bro. Mm, what up? Because we're going to change the subject to something that's so okay. it's immature. When you first heard the week coming, I can't lie. <laughs> Go shit set on wax. I was laughing at that. Me and Monkey have been because he said in the Yo. first team meeting, he was like, he was like, you gotta feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta feel it inside of you. That's what he said. It's on okay, that's, that's the video. Up, bro. Bro, that's, it's on that. Sh- I'm not making anything up there though. Is. He said, you gotta feel it inside of you because I'm coming. There's no that's way. verbatim what he said. Because <laughs> we got a we got like a leadership. Meeting with him every probably he said, "Hey, Tuesday, wait, Wednesday." Did y'all yeah. meet today? He said, nah. "Y'all said something." He said, "Y'all That's was." That's what I'm finna talk about. He was like, "He was like, uh, you better watch watch behind you, cause the dude the dude behind you always coming." Then we was like, <laughs> "He was like, what you mean, coach?" And he was like, "Oh my god, y'all know what I'm talking about." <laughs> He did say that in one of our one of our things. He's like, y'all some nasty kids, man. man. Remember he said that last year? He said, y'all some nasty kids, man. Who was it? Nah, I don't know, know what it was. Bro, you know to know who always has something to say? Who? Ben. Ben? Ben. I love Ben. ben Shout out Ben. Ben love is what ben. makes... Ben just started a YouTube channel. Ben, ben, ben is he? what makes yeah. our team funny. And, More funny. He, ben Caleb. is really funny. And Caleb. Ben is Shout out K2. You. 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 <laughs> you. <laughs> Bro, anytime Coach Prime called Ben out in a team meeting, you knew Ben had some like he was going to say something. He had some motion going but, on that. But what people don't to. know about Ben is, bro, he's a very valuable asset to the squad. No, he is. He's a hard he, worker. He he works hard. He leads he by works example. Hard and he leads by and he brings the team more together. Bro. He does. So do yeah. y'all know? I don't think I told y'all this story, but when I first got here in the spring, this man Ben almost gave me a concussion. He did how? So. <laughs> And it was because of you. Oh my god. And gosh, it was because of dude. you. No. Yes. It was because of <laughs> no. you. And you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna remember this. You're gonna remember exactly what play it was because you got up talking smack. Right, oh, you on. started talking so, crazy to JD? Not talking crazy to me, but you were just talking crazy to the defense because it was like one of them heated days. Oh, okay. Me? Okay. So it was we were doing it was during spring ball. We had first gotten out there when nobody had their names on their jerseys. Nobody had nothing. It was like the second day of pads. I think like the second or third day of pads because we were only in shells. We didn't have yeah. like a full uniform and everything. Big old uniforms. And so, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were doing, uh, what is it? The five plays, five plays down, next team, five plays, five plays, and everything like that. And y'all were heading towards the end zone that is closest to the school no or away from the away school. from the school okay. towards the garage and dylan got like a run up the middle i think it was mm-hmm. and i believe we were in a three down front i think we were oh that's 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 a broken where i right folded there, over mm-hmm. where i folded over and you were going up the middle and i was on you like i was about to go tackle you i went to hit you and everything like i was on like i was on you uh-huh. Ben comes like a bat out of hell straight from safety, just <laughs> helmet to helmet, straight to me. Didn't touch you. Did not touch you at all. You know what's crazy? I know this you is remember in the that indoor. Play. Yes. I have the video on my phone. I bro. know you do. See. That man, Ben, smacked the mess out that of me. Video. Why do you have that? Bro, because it was a good, that. I'm not going to lie, it was a good play by Dylan. Like, it was a good play. And I think you posted it. You Maybe I did. It, you posted it because it's in our. It got to be in our chat. That's another thing about Darius and Bucky, bro. But nah, that but yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you got to watch them because they gonna get everything. Everything. Bro. They gonna get everything. He don't even remember half the stuff he posts. You hey, know. Darius, but did you, you get that? Did you, did you get that extra film? You see the extra <laughs> film in your camera? <laughs> yes. <bro. laughs> <laughs> Hey yo! Yeah, bro. Why you got me? Hey, why you say? Why did you say, damn, bro? His deal face on there, bro. Send that to Caleb. Send that to Caleb. No, oh, Caleb sent it to me. I already sent oh. it to Caleb. You know what I'm saying? Why? Nah, bro? that's crazy. You know, Caleb oh probably made God. that, bro. Nah, if you know, it the, got made for me look, in high school. If you know the AI God. pictures, we're just talking about the new AI stuff that's been going on out here. Oh, my oh yeah, gosh. look at look at look at Darius in the back. 
Look at money. That boy was so Get sad. Trim! Money, he from the L, just to let y'all know, Polk County, where we breed real athletes better than Texas or in California. Oh, wow. And New York. Oh, I'd say, wow. say Texas and Florida is up there. That should have been a pick. Yeah, Texas is a close second. They ran the same what? play to the other side. Real close yeah, second. We should have got that. Look at Trav. Look at Ray. Ray always in the cut, bro. That's one <laughs> thing about Ray. What's on this? That's the first time I've seen Trav wear any type of designer. Man. Like, actually, because he pulled up to the game, he never wears anything. He had a Gucci bag on. I'm like, okay, bro. Liddy. I'm trying to. Uh, oh, look. Oh, the I, I was so oh, snap this game. I was so turned. Oh, snap this game. He had three? I think so. What? Oh. Three tutties. Three? He had a. Uh, was that that one hand? He had like 191 yeah. yards. Three tutties as a freshman. Was it three tutties? I thought it was yeah, three. Yeah, it was three tutties. He had three tutties this game? Yeah, because he all three of them came in the second half, too, I think. Or one came in the first and two came in the second. Because yeah, remember, we lost this game, I think, 33-38. But Zay was like a huge part of that. Man, oh. I was so... Oh, oh my, my bad. Oh. oh. Yeah. I was so sick the USC game because, man, that's a team that never never offered me, bro, but was always on the phone with me. You know? And that's crazy. Just, 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 just like TCU, too, bro. Man. Like they, Those were some schools that always mm. talked to me. Never offered, bro, and it just the first the when we beat TCU that was that was that was great for me. You know what I'm saying? Just to know that we beat the team that never offered me, but USC, bro, when we lost against them, I was so sick because they just played with me my whole recruiting process, and that was my dream school. One USC, my, one of my dream schools, yeah. We was that close, that close to beating them too. I ain't even get off that game. I ain't even, man. <laughs> Is but, there anything looking back on the season how Dill has those type of feelings? JD, is there any any games or any plays that make you go, man, like, come on, bro. If I had if I could do it again, bro, come on, bro. Like, I need that one. That one I need, bro. Yeah. Bro, yeah. y'all know exactly what play I'm about to bring up. Stanford. Yeah. The play where they scored in the end zone on that crazy catch. You know, that's not bro. supposed to happen, and you just y'all didn't. That like, so what? did y'all watch the D line? No. What so during that play, they sent the running back to cut me. They slid away from me. I sent the running back to cut me. I hurdled the running back, and was in the face of the quarterback just like this, and he just lobbed it up on a prayer. This is what game, Stanford. Stanford, bro. That crazy catch that that dude had over trial. I'm telling you, I wish. Not even. I didn't even need half a second. And I would have had him. Are you still? That's the game. I felt like everything just. Like I feel like I could have put that game away. It just was sad we lost that game. Honestly, it was a game we never should have lost. No, that one that hurt. That hurt. Like when I tell you, I I didn't eat that night. It was a different type of feeling going home, knowing that you were up that much. Yes. And then you lost. I didn't eat that night because I just felt like. Embarrassed. At it was that definitely point. an it embarrassing, embarrassing feeling, bro. Definitely. And as I was sitting there, like just, I was really just sitting at home, just like, did that really just happen? Did we really just let that happen? Did we really just let somebody come back on us by thirty three points? And it was just like that was when I really had a moment of self reflection, like, okay, what can I truly, truly do to be the best version of myself? You feel me? Like, what can I truly do to make this team better? Because I, I really felt like we should have been going into that bye week. We should have been five and we should have been five and two. Or what mm-hmm. was it? Five and two? Five and yeah. three? One of them two. But we should have been, we should have had five games under one under our belt when we was walking in there. And I feel like we could have, I feel like we really should have went like 10 and two this past year. But what I feel like, what we were talking about earlier, what I feel like what really hurt us this past year was not being like, a team. Yeah, like we weren't com- we didn't have the camaraderie that you guys do have this just, year. Just a whole bunch you of people coming together. Like we had talent, we had all the talent in the world, but like when you guys don't mesh and y'all not like on the same page, you never gonna be a good team. If y'all can't like you said, go out to dinner with each other. If y'all can't go do things, hit an arcade together, just hang out and just have like quality time together where y'all boys really bonding and learning more about each other type deal, like. 
if you can't learn about your teammates and your players, you're not going to be a good team. If y'all are clicked up or y'all not really bonding and meshing, if the quarterback's not meshing with the O-line, if the D-line's not meshing with the linebackers, yeah. nobody's going to be able to do like what they really need to do, you feel me? The funny part is you saying if you can't do that type of stuff, then it's not ever going to work. I feel like that's the first thing we did. Yeah. The first day I met all of them, Khalil, all of them, I pulled up to dinner, and it was like, Shador or I don't know they just already had set the tone of like they was on some friend stuff like yeah, I'm right. like we okay friends. that's hard yeah nah and I feel like we should have taken more initiative last year as like for us personally D-line I feel like we should have taken more initiative to go do things fun because them boys went to a um, what was it an escape room together yeah so they were doing stuff like that yeah. and like the Bucks and the D-line weren't like together on that but the Bucks were still like doing stuff together type deal, but yeah. like it wasn't like D line mm-hmm. and Bucks all together like meshing and like just coinciding with everybody and everything. Like it was just different. You Carter, mm-hmm. what were you saying? No, nah, I was just talking about the relationship that we got with uh, Shador and really just everybody, bro. But yeah, when we got here, we was just should we been on the phone we first got here, linked up, went to Shador crib. He stayed behind me the whole time. I didn't know so yeah. We start going over there, just chilling, talking, chopping it up and everything. So we go out to eat down there. Now we just, shit, we talk like each other. Yeah. We say 50-50, you know, raise yes. that one eyebrow and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot. Culture, it's the culture of it. Yeah. It's the little things that actually, that's that's what life really looks like when you're a part of a team. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The assimilation. And that's what I'm... You start having your own jokes together. Y'all start having your own slang. Yeah. Y'all start having your own inside inside stuff. You feel me? Uh, it's 50-50. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like 50-50. 50-50. Now, it's just funny how all that came apart as 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 a result of... Oh, so being, now, y'all boys had Twan on that intro. Hold on. Go back right quick. It's just as a result of uh, being actually caring. I remember y'all boys had my boy Twan from Georgia Tech come to y'all when y'all were at Jackson. We might end it here, but I'll just keep it rolling for a little bit. But Dill, I appreciate and you no, for hopping you on, gang. Me on, bro. Yes, sir. I mean, good shoot. Talking to y'all boys. I'm about to be on the Your same way. That's straight. Huh? Your dog in the uh, cage? So yeah, right now. Yeah. I'll, I'll give y'all a little, uh, you know what I'm saying, what's going to happen tomorrow. Your car is getting his episode, and we also doing Cam. But I seen JD today, and I literally, I, and I, me and Dill already had it locked in. So now it's like, Sometimes you got to just do it that day where you said it. Yeah. So this is Dill's episode. I wanted bro to come on here because it's like they were actually cool when, when he was playing here too. And it's a great, great interactions. Yakari, I'm glad you, you know what I'm saying, was giving us some wisdom too. Um, just stay tuned, y'all. Hopefully y'all sure. enjoy. All the boys will get all the clips for their socials and we out. You already know, man. It's always Sco Buffs. Yeah. And I could no be Dylan in a race just to let y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> just want to let y'all know we can line it up outside anytime, anywhere, any place.